Hey, it's John Carlos, and Eddie and I are here for another edition of Movies We're Talking About. Yeah. We just talked about Texas Chainsaw 1 and 2. We are continuing that discussion. Uh, let's just dive right on into Texas Chainsaw. Leatherface. You said you have lots of three. things. <laughs> Pardon me? You said you had lots of things to say. I want to hear. I, I did. Well, I, I didn't think I would at the start. I watched this movie... For the, I've only seen this prior to this recording, saw it once. I saw it only maybe in the last five years, four years ago oh. I see it. I, yeah. I, actually, before I even get into it, I'll, I'll, let me just, uh, I, I remember seeing the trailer. Did you ever see the trailer for this movie? Yes. Oh, see, your face. See, I saw that trailer. <laughs> I forget what movie I had rented or bought that was made by New Line in the early 2000s, but it, you know, you would get a DVD and it, one of the bonus features would be trailers for other movies. Yeah. And they had the trailer for Texas Chainsaw 3 on it. And I instantly had this flashback. I'm like, oh my God, I remember this. I saw this trailer when I was a kid and I didn't fucking like it. And I blocked it out until this very fucking moment. But I remember as a kid, just that hulking figure looking over the lake and the chainsaw came out of the water. And I remember going like, that's not natural. That's not right. What is this? What's going on? What's going on? And then like, the lightning, it's a cool beat. The lightning strikes, he grabs it. When he turns around, I just like, what the, I do not fucking like this preview next. And that stayed with me for a little while. Um, that is hilarious. It never had that effect on me. I was too, I was so cheesed out. I was like, oh God. Like, I mean, we, we, we went for surrealism, you know, fever dream in the second one. And now we're in the third and it just looked, I, <laughs> no, it, it just, didn't it, it didn't send me i yeah but i was a kid and i just first of all horror trait like child's play 2 trailer fucked me up this one didn't i know me up, but like i didn't like it um all right, all right. and then i finally that's got fair to, and i remember going uh, this movie like i didn't expect him to like go to the lake and have the lady of the lake toss him a chainsaw but i'm like why <laughs> what this trailer is nonsense compared to the yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Look, I'll tell you this. When I when I first saw it, because I, I I've spent my whole life hearing about, you know, the nonsense of four, and I really really hate, we'll get to it later. But I do not like the Texas Chainsaw remake. Um, mm -hmm. I never really heard much about three, which I always I always just kind of dismissed it as well. It's probably trash then because people, you know, I I wouldn't say I liked it, but like the first time I saw it, I'm like, this is all right. So mm -hmm. fine and i watched it two times for this um and i still stand by like it's all right it's not look it's not it's not good <laughs> however it is not the low point of the series it's not there are things about it that are interesting there uh there are things that i can watch it and find it it's worth my 90 minutes. So there's, there's little nuggets of value. There's things that I can kind of go, huh? Things that I can laugh at, things that I can judge it on. And, you know, uh, it's, sometimes it's fun to not just hate watch a movie, but to like be judgy about it. Mm. Um, and and, and I, <laughs> we, we, we've just, this is the first time where the franchise, first of all, two is already an interesting deviation from one, but this is the first time it was kind of handed off to other people and, and didn't fully connect. Um, before I go on to anything, like just generally, how do you feel about the movie, Yeti? Okay, let me give you a background. Uh, I saw it for the first time, um, I think on the heels of two. Uh, I was up north uh, in Northern California doing uh, a play. And I was living in a Winnebago outside the theater. And uh, I was like, I had already seen the first movie and I, it fucked me up and being in this remote small town surrounded by mountains and country folk and everything like that. I, for some reason, I, I'm a masochist and I watched the first one and scared the crap out of me. And then I watched the second one for the first time because they all had them at this blockbuster. It was a small town, had a blockbuster, a drive through Starbucks and movie theater, and that is all. And- um, That's all I, I need, man. Yeah, right? And, um, uh, and the rest of it was all just like antique shops and like little, you know, vestibules for you to sit in and eat you know i mean vestibule i mean like tiny restaurants tiny anyway small town small town small town 
So I basically just lived in my Winnebago and rented movies from that blockbuster. And I thought, oh, they have all the Texas Chainsaws um, at the time because the remake wasn't out yet. Or it was out, but it, you know, it wasn't on VHS. Uh, I was watching VHS. And because um, uh, 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 it was 2003. So I'm watching the second one. I really, really like it. Getting creeped out. I watched the third one. Uh, that was the last time I watched. <laughs> On the heat too. That's hardly fair. Yeah, um, but at the same time, like I was game for anything. Like I was just kind of like, okay, yeah, let's see were. what this is. And yeah, but um, and I so this was my first time revisiting it these past four days. I did rewatch it because I'm so unfamiliar with it. I wanted to just get it fresher in my head. So I've now seen it three times. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think our motives to watch it a second time might have been slightly different because I think I like this movie slightly less than you do. I think you, I feel, I think you do too. Yeah, I feel like... Um, and I, I, and again, down, I liking it is not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I enjoy it less than you do. Yeah. Um, I Because I, I wrote down like when the Halloween 5 kind of opening credits, <laughs> you know, except it's not a pumpkin. It's yeah. like, you know, Leatherface in his workshop doing his yeah. thing. Um, I'm watching that and I'm just kind of like, this is the first one that feels like a movie to me. But that was not true. Because um, the second one didn't feel like a movie at all. It felt sur- like a surreal fever dream. The first one didn't feel like a movie at all. It felt like something real happening. Um, so this one felt like a movie I wrote. And then as I progressed through it, particularly the second time, I was like, but it doesn't feel like a movie. It feels like it has nothing happens in it. It feels so it doesn't like, really. Ha- it feels like almost a movie. Yeah. So it's like it. So it it has the aesthetic of a movie and the kind of like uh, uh, open arms of a movie. Like I'm a movie. Come watch me. But nothing. <laughs> no, nothing happens. <laughs> but nothing happens in it. It's just. Um, and yet at the same time all it is is things happening like it's just kind of like yes. watch these two who are driving i didn't know if the 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 two the duo the little protagonists um i don't even remember their names ryan and michelle ryan and michelle i couldn't tell whether they were brother and sister mm-hmm. whether they were co-workers whether they were in you know lovers and then i think by the uh, maybe I don't know maybe about 20 minutes in 30 minutes in I kind of broke down. by the time they got to the gas station I was like all right I think it's kind of like an echo of an LG stretch situation where he's kind of fancies her would like more but she's kind of like not about that and she's just like I just love you as a friend kind of thing um can I just before you, I wrote one yeah. up, two leads bad couple but seem like siblings yeah exactly but they're not a couple. I don't. I don't get no, a no, they, vibe they, from that. They've broken up. Oh, they've broken up. I see. I don't even. Yeah. I. Well, you're gonna me... have to explain this movie to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's it, how I feel. About it. I didn't gather what the fuck they were the first time I saw it a few years ago. Yeah. The, and then yeah. my first time watching it for this sitting, I'm watching that scene, the, their introductory scene, going. Sound. I think you're a couple, but you're not playing. Like you guys don't feel like you. And then the third time I watched it, um, just for funsies, more just to, my little thing was I rented it from Amazon. So I'm like, well, I have it for like another 11 hours. I guess I'll just watch yeah. it again. And I put yeah. the, the subtitles on. <clears throat> and it, like specifically, he talks about like, like if like we're going to Florida and from there you're, you're flying away. And it's like, if we have this fight, he doesn't say we break up. But like, if we, if we don't talk, it's over. And if we do keep talking, it's over. But either way, like we're over. So it's like, she wanted to go on this road trip for them to like, one last time before I leave, and it'd be nice for us to talk, but you're like evading all the stuff and we're not really talking and we're not really having our last, it's weird. There is nothing about their chemistry that suggests any of that. My thing was, well, obviously they're not a couple. They've come off sort of like bickering brother and sister. I'm like, well, they're not a couple because it's over. However, I don't also get the history that they no, were. Thing. No, no. In fact, I don't get the impression that they even got to hang out much before the cameras rolled. Like I would yeah. hope at any time, you know, maybe you have the table read, maybe you bump into someone at like a costume fitting, but like I always hope 
that like the actors at least once were like, hey, can we go get coffee or have dinner and just like yeah, yeah, build something. Uh, and I don't think they got that opportunity. Um, or or they did, not, and they have no chemistry. <laughs> or that. <laughs> Sometimes people just don't click, and it's, you yeah. can't make it's, it happen. It's, it's bad that they don't like they come off as siblings, which is yeah. like it's like a oh shit, like we we needed yeah. guidance, and uh, and they either that or they just weren't taking the notes. <laughs> but um, yeah, also also big kind of overall complaint. I don't, and I don't you stuff like this doesn't usually matter to me. Like I remember. I think it was War of the Planet of the Apes. Everybody was complaining, like, there's no war. And I'm like, it was, it's just the next Planet of the Apes movie. Get, like, get over it. Um, <laughs> but, and even with horror sequels, largely, like, I didn't pay attention to them a lot growing up. Like, you know, Nightmare 2 is Freddy's Revenge, but I never referred what to it then? as Freddy's Revenge. Yeah. And I mean, and I knew Dream Warriors, Dream Master, Dream Child, be just because it was so abundantly clear okay that's the title but i didn't go like good i saw the dream child they deliver you know i didn't <laughs> and i, I paid to see some dream warriors there better be some damn dream warriors up there on that screen that said it's called leatherface this is chainsaw massacre three yeah <laughs> roman numeral three but it's called leatherface uh, it's the least in uh, so far in the franchise the least leatherface intensive movie there's maybe one thing that happened that was Leatherface related that I was like, that's new and I like it. And it was just him with the like the speaking spell or whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah. And a little face and his food. And like that is incorrect or whatever it says. Yeah. He does it again and he just goes, and it's just like, okay, you're embracing the fact that yes, this is a childlike mind. Um, and he's trying, but he's trying to better himself, <laughs> but he's frustrated because it's also like showing you like, okay, but he's not, he doesn't fit. Cause number one, like he, he's too big, he doesn't fit. But also like, and he's playing with like an ages three and up kind of toy and everything like that. And he just doesn't get it. His, his everything about his psychological makeup prevents him from existing in um, our world, uh, you know, like successfully. Um, he would have a, I, I, to, to, to put it lightly, he would have a lot of difficulty assimilating if he were ever to be reintegrated or yeah, integrated, just, period, into society. And also, the opening thing about like him, Junior, now his name's Junior. Now his name's Junior. Um, sure. <laughs> the thing about Junior uh, uh, donning another persona when he would put the mask on his face to become Leatherface, right. I didn't, I would, that's why I don't connect this with the other two movies, because I'm just kind of like, there's nothing about that in the other two movies, and I never, I, I don't believe it. I, I don't, it's not even smart enough for me to buy it and get, get on board with it, so I didn't like it. A lot of the connections are very surface level, and it is, it is um, somewhat sequely, and somewhat, you know, if we're going to be doing tropes, we do have, a, we encounter a brother who talks a little hillbilly crazy, <laughs> <laughs> go to a gas station, Lots of chases in the woods. Yeah. Kind of have the weird dinner scene. Um, Gramps is in it again. Yeah, what's up? Quite being blown up in the last movie. Um, <laughs> Leatherface and, is, and and Leatherface is being, in it besides being in, impaled by a chainsaw. being impaled and exploded. Um, yeah. <laughs> in fact, it's weird because they have he has a leg brace in this one. And I'm like, oh, cool, because the chainsaw fell on his leg in the first movie. But it's weird that you know, two doesn't acknowledge that. No, three does, um, but they don't acknowledge that he got exploded or he doesn't have like any like weird <laughs> stitching or anything on his belly. Yeah, um, which, I mean, I just always thought like, okay, so it's a little weird and inconsistent. But now do I sort of more realize, even though this is called Texas Chainsaw Three, mm -hmm. it's not really three because it, it's just they don't flat out say we're ignoring two and this is the real sequel, but it is ignoring two, yeah. and just saying, well, here's Leatherface, he's got a leg brace on. This is where he went after the events of the first movie. <laughs> and it's extra, I mean, there's the, this, this series, if you try to make any sense of the story between each movie and the family, you will get so lost, confused. First of all, the second movie alone 
in the opening crawl, they refer to Sally as reporting things to the police, and now she's comatose. Yeah. The third movie says she's dead, which I always thought, yeah. like, okay, then she's comatose, and then she died. But what's right. confusing is they refer to, after the events of the first movie, they captured a W.E. Sawyer. Yeah. And that they thought that W.E. Sawyer might be Leatherface, and he's like a schizo. Yeah. And he died in 1981. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, who the fuck is W.E.? Because he's not in one or two. If you want to assign that W.E. was Drayton, which ex- and that he died in 1981, that would explain why Drayton is not in this movie. Mm-hmm. However, <laughs> if it was Drayton, and this is three, he died in 1981, but two takes place in 86. So yeah. what? Um, <laughs> Maybe Nubbins and, died twice. Maybe Nubbins was W.E. <laughs> right, and then they recovered his body. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I, I also like to toy with the idea of, like, what if there's just some other Sawyer that we didn't know about? I also toy with the idea of, and this is where it's really weird, but in the fourth movie, there's a W.E., so like, <laughs> so if you take four into account, then that's the one from three, but then he <laughs> didn't actually die. But it was a gas chamber. So like, how do you? I, he's fuck. named. Maybe he's he's named. He's W. E. The second. You know, he's he's, he's another junior. junior. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so <laughs> look, W. E.'s nonsense. Um, you know. Leatherface is now Junior instead of Bubba. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> so, so just you just accept that you know what? Don't don't make don't think too hard. Just it takes place after one, and now he's he's with this family now. I at least one of the things that I kind of thought was interesting. I remember the first time watching it, and when we get when we get to the house, they they still do the thing where like it's kind of you know like. Remember, remember when you ran into the hitchhiker and then you ran into the guy at the gas station? Well, they're all part of the same family. And this one's like, oh, yeah. yeah. So in this case, again, the hitchhiker, the guy from the gas station, this other guy, they're all part of the same family. Um, but when the mom comes out in the wheelchair, I was like, oh, OK. So like, cool. Like there is, I mean, they make mention, a passing mention of like, you know, like some sort of matriarchal figure in the first movie. But like here we actually have, and I think she, mm-hmm. she's dead. So here she's not dead, but still, I like the idea, especially when I, when I still thought Drayton was the father. Yeah. Well, here's the mother. Like, and people like, everyone's family isn't all located in one house. People can have siblings and other families. This I'm fine with Leatherface just going to like, another part of his family. I okay. thought it was kind of neat that we had a matriarch this time. Um, I couldn't understand half of what she said. <laughs> I had to turn I, I the subtitles on a few you. times to kind of like go back and be like, I, I, I can't even give you an example because I don't remember. I just remember she said something to uh, Michelle, so, something like, I'll hit you or something. I don't remember what she said. She said something, but it was like a, ah, and I'm just like, what? what, what, what? Huh? Half of it I could, but the other half I was just like, I, I have no idea. It, it, it's funny because when we, I, I think actually four is the one where I'm like, what the fuck are these people saying? And like, I learned I huh. so much more out of four when I put some subtitles on. Also, like it, everyone's yelling in four, but also like the sound quality is really bad in four. In the next generation. I'm going to wait to comment on four until we cover but, four. <laughs> so, but, but you're talking about like not understanding. Like I had a hard time understanding what the fuck was being said in four. All right. Um, okay. I do think it's cute the uh, like the screenplay of because uh, I remember watch I'm watching it this time going uh, Michelle does not interest me in the slightest and this 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 poor actress who you know, is and there's there like my thing was like there's nothing going on here with her and then what's really funny is the next time I watched it I started noticing like in the beginning. Um, how uh there, there's two things where they they attempt to write like a little like a little arc because uh 
I forget what they're talking about that would require violence. And he's like, well, you know, you're going to have to, if, if you want to wake up in the real world. Real oh, right, life. man. He's like, I could never do that. He's like, well, welcome to the real world where you'd have to. And you're like, oh, she doesn't like violence. <laughs> and then when they uh, see the, uh, was it, it's an armadillo on the side of the road. Yeah, uh, like, a little twitchy. She, she can't bring herself and he will. It's like, oh, guys, she doesn't like violence. I think by the end of this movie, so what gets me is you're setting it up. And um, I remember thinking about how like Benny played by the great Ken Forey, he's having this big showdown with Leatherface yeah. in, the, in the lake. And I just, I'm watching it thinking this should be Michelle in there. Yeah. This is what, what I want. This big fight. I want it to be her big fight. That is where this should be going. Mm -hmm. And then he kills him. And then she bludgeons him with, and I'm like, oh, look, it's a, look, it's a little arc. She bludgeons him with a rock. He's the armadillo. She couldn't the armadillo. kill, and now she she's, can. She's in the real world, and she has to do what she has to do. Well, <laughs> I'll, that's also, also, okay, go on. Yeah. When, uh, what's, it? I'm trying to get his, his name right here. Uh, uh, Alfredo. Alfredo shows up at the end in the truck, and she, at this point, she's like, Ch -ch -ch boom. So, like, she's, oh, yeah. She has now come all the way around. Um, having, having said that, I wanted her in the lake. It's also weird. I don't, I also don't want her in the lake because simply the, this genre, this genre I love so much, is notorious mm -hmm. for being, you know, like horror so white. And it's so rare to see like, a black lead uh, yeah. in these movies. So I don't want to take out this cool, strong, black male character getting to fight with other face. I do want to take him out so she could, so who do I, who do I want to empower in this movie more? The black <laughs> male or the female? I, God damn it movie. So, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, what I, I can I, say is good movie, but whatever. You know. No, I mean, I, what I can say is like, I, because even when uh, Benny is standing off with Tex, oh. Tex gets way too much, like, I don't know what the word is, time standing. Time I'm, I'm like, Benny, come on. You can, you could trash this fucker. Do it. Make it happen. So that, I was upset with that. Finally, oh. he does. And I'm just kind of like, okay, good. But I'm not, I'm not happy about it. I'm just kind of like, finally. And then when they get to, okay, the thing about the lake. Yes. When they get to the lake and he's in the lake fighting Leatherface and everything like that, I might have been a little bit more on board if they could have teamed up more. Like, why does it have to be an either or if it could be the two of them cooperating yeah. with each other? Double teams. And great. because they're in the lake, the chainsaw is doing something I always appreciate when the chainsaw does new things. <laughs> like I'm just kind of like, oh, something else to 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 be um, formidable, or you know, to yeah. have like some threat behind it. So it's just kind of running and yeah, whirring float. around in the water. Yeah. But it 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 could easily because it's also it's running, it's got teeth on it, so it could easily just kind of like glide by and like nick you, cut you, maim you, like you know, kill you, whatever. The thing that bothered me was it's bobbing around in the water. It's not crazy it's not going it's just gonna yep. so why is michelle standing like on i don't know if you call it the shoreline or just you know like just at the water's edge yeah just watching all of this she could have it was far enough from them too that she could have like gone in and i feel like i complain about this on the pod a lot where they just have a woman standing there going Oh, you know? <laughs> and it's well, like, go get it. No, go I'll, get it, bitch. Well, I hadn't seen this in so long that I remember how this fight ended. But when I'm watching her on the edge, I'm thinking, go get like a fucking rock or something and right. like throw it, yeah. throw it. And then she Do ends up getting a something. rock later. I'm like, yeah, like that, only earlier. Yeah, but it's too late and it doesn't satisfy me. And then, okay, to the whole, I don't, I don't even know his name. I don't care enough about this character to learn his name, but Alfredo. What? <laughs> Oh God, yeah, boom so Howard. gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we get to the end and she's um, 
uh, 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 finally kind of like owning her shit and everything like that, I'm still, I, I have complaints. I'm upset. Yeah. Because she's, <laughs> she's laying down. I can't remember if she kicks him out, how she gets there, but she's laying down in the passenger seat. Sorry, boo, be quiet. She's laying down in the passenger seat and she's got her head like tucked b- just by the open window. And she's reaching mm-hmm. down below, but she doesn't want to move, God knows why, down to just get the gun, just to get her gat and everything. She's reaching down, can't reach it, but she's immediately like taunting him, sending out the sound so he knows where her head is next to an open window. I'm like, where are you? Where are you? And I'm like, you're not ready. You're not ready. Stop calling for him to right, like show right. himself. Get down, get the gun, get up, sit up no, away she, from the windows and just she's too 360, aggro. 360. Keep your eyes everywhere. So when he pops up, <laughs> take that, bitch. And she doesn't do that. So what does he do? He grabs her fucking hair. And I don't remember what happens after that because I was just so fucking pissed off. I was like, I can't do this. That said, can't really blame her for that. Because all of the things I basically complained, well, not all the things, the lake probably still happened, but I watched the original ending. Have you seen that? No, I do know. Well, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't know there was an original ending for me to find. I do know that this last scene uh, was shot unbeknownst to the director. Yeah, and he saw it for the first time <laughs> um, in the theater. <laughs> but I do, and I also knew that um, Benny, because when you watch the scene in the lake, Benny's fucking yeah. dead. Yes, um, he is. Most audiences were like, fucking Benny. And they're like, all right, we got to bring Benny back. So, <laughs> Somehow. Um, so please tell me the original ending because I have not seen it. Okay, so Benny dies. And I think he ends up, I didn't, I, it was so blurry. It's on YouTube. You can look at it yourself. I don't remember how it happens because I was barely watching it. I was getting ready. But, um, I think he ends up like kind of skinned and pinned against a tree. If it's him, it might be somebody else, but it looked like him. It was kind of, Ugh! and there's like a trap and he's just like, Ugh! and he just dies. So she takes the rock, beats Leatherface over the face and everything like that. He dies or presumably she leaves I did, and she's- I did read that he died in the original version. Yeah. Like... So she's on the road and uh, just walking, walking, walking. There's a car that's coming up. So looks like a cop car. And she's like trying to flag it down, drives right past her and keeps going. It's just like, what? And she starts to kind of run after it. And it stops mysteriously for some reason. And I'm like, who's the driver? And she starts, she gets kind of like maybe within 12 feet of it and just kind of like just close enough to see. And she stops and she's like, oh no, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, who's the driver? It's not the driver that we're worried about. The driver is a cop. Little head bops up with a doll and it's the little girl. Mm. Uh, I don't even remember her name, just little girl. Yeah, little girl. Jennifer Banco, who was in Friday part seven. <laughs> and I, I think she's credited as Sarah, but I might be wrong. I, I know okay. it's not maybe even a credit. Some people call her Sarah, but I know she's a little girl. Okay, so little girl. But Bob's up, she's got her doll, and she's just, I think she waves at her with the doll and everything. You know, the doll with the real baby head. Yeah, 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 Fuck yeah. me up. Fuck me up. So she's like waving, and she's just kind of like, <laughs> and the girl's laughing, like as she waves and she's being carted away. I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Like I, I, like I survived? I don't know. But they drive off without Michelle, so who knows why he stopped for this moment to happen. Right. So he drives off, and, she, and Michelle is left standing in the middle of the road, just <laughs> <laughs> like that would push her over the edge. Credits, end of movie. <laughs> so you can that, see why they reshot girl. the ending. Yeah, that, that just reminds Bad. me of, of the the other. It, it didn't play well the first time I saw it, but it. it but when uh, when they when her and Ben like when they were escaping the house. And yeah. Benny's gonna fight Tex, and she's like, "Okay, come on, like, okay, let's go." And I'm like, <laughs> "Oh God, what is? Holy shit!" 
someone, yeah, someone needs another rehearsal. Like, <laughs> but then the second time, knowing that, like, oh, this is part of her arc. Even then, I'm like, oh, like, like I, I know on paper you're pushed to a place where you're now kind of crazy, but you're also finding your aggression. But like, ooh, yeah, man, uh, yeah. I, and I, it's funny because like, I, I sometimes I look at stuff like that, and you know, it's easy to blame an actor, and uh, I don't enjoy talking trash on actors like that. But also sometimes I look at that, I go, hmm a director needed to step in and help with that um yeah. i don't know much about the director other than what interviews i've seen because i think he, they feature I, yeah i think it's it runs in the family covers the sequels mm. and like there is like five minutes or ten minutes on three and the one thing about the director is he seems like a pretty chill good dude mm. um and i uh, and that there is the tragedy of this movie where um i am very worried like it, it's pretty goreless and i know that yeah one does also doesn't feature gore but one succeeds in so many ways without gore it's yeah so terrifying and interesting and this doesn't have much of a drive uh it's certainly mm -hmm. not scary it's mm -hmm. really disturbing so in that case i feel like you need gore and it doesn't have gore um, but I, did, isn't this the one that did and it got edited out? That's the bummer is that, yeah, I found out somewhat recently that, that they had, because K&B did the effects. Mm -hmm. Love K&B. And they, yeah. uh, they, they talked about how like, no, we, we did all sorts of shit. And we did yeah. a screening of the movie and it, he's like, what? It, you know, but immediately after like Bob Shea came like huffing, puffing up, he's like, we can't release like with all this gore. like no this needs to go out this needs to go out this goes we need to cut this out we need to cut this out he's like and this was this is before we took it to the mpaa this was just bob shea saying i can't release this cut yeah out. and he's like and we cut it from like the original like like we already mm -hmm. had like a cut and we just literally like cutting bits out so like mm -hmm. they don't know where those little bits are so it's not like an easy restoration to do someday right um and right. then they had to cut even more out for the mpaa but i remember I remember being kind of like fine with the lack of gore because I was still just kind of generally like, huh, like it's just I'm vaguely amused by what I was watching. Um, I like I like the nails but, in her hands when sure. she's sitting in the chair. I like when Bigos, yeah. When they've got her ex boyfriend upside down yeah. and like, oh, we don't we don't do that anymore. We have a new thing, and they swing this mallet and they just cut away from it completely. Going, yeah. Well, that's disappointing. And mm -hmm. I think there was like another kill in the woods where I'm like, oh, that was, this could have been so much more. And then you find out like, oh, it was all chopped out. I'm like, oh, well, that makes all the sense in the world then. Yeah, and especially this especially was what was happening away. to horror. Yeah, this is what yeah. was happening to horror movies in 1990. This, was, this is what was happening to practical effects in 1990 and around that time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, that's a real bummer. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you were mentioning the, this is, the uh the, the fight with benny and tex um if i could make a newer reference it it, it felt like when well, you're wondering why is this going on so long and it's like because the writer really wanted some quips in there man yeah <laughs> the, the 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 you know it's 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 almost like you know you have let's say you have a justice league the snyder version and then joss whedon goes you know what we need we need some references to like brunch and and <laughs> not like let's let's throw in some more jokes and it felt yeah, right. like, like, oh yeah something is definitely bleeding <laughs> i'm batman everybody good night yeah. <laughs> exactly and it and it actually wrote it down because i i remember going what and laughing but having this fight and he's like get out man why are you doing this we're hungry haven't you ever heard of a pizza i like liver <laughs> all right right god why are you doing this we're hungry <laughs> <laughs> I love the retort. Have you ever heard of a pizza? Which payoff in the fourth movie, by the way. Um, but I like liver <laughs> and onions. And then here's my favorite part: and pain, and pain, <laughs> and pain. And I, when I was watching it this, the the second time for this viewing, I, I almost I, I wonder if because it's every time they do it, it's from a different angle. And I wonder mm -hmm. if it wasn't written as and pain and pain and pain. But they had the coverage, <laughs> the takes, and, yeah. and it was only one and pain. And they're like, you know what we can do in editing? Cut to that angle. And, that <laughs> that angle. That <laughs> and they made a moment in post. And I wonder if Vigo saw it and was like, what? <laughs> that wasn't my, oh, shit. 
<laughs> it's like, oh, they did that. All right. Because the uh, campaign <laughs> is super awkward. Um, there's a lot of yeah. super awkwardness. I, and I, 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 I get... Eddie, this is hard because I, 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 one of the things I'm trying to do with this is try to stay positive. But when we do these franchises, <laughs> sometimes I'm forced to watch things that are bad and, and yeah. I feel guilty critiquing things because, you know, I'm certainly not the best actor in the world either. But, you know, um, I remember when, the, uh, was it Michelle? And Michelle's leaving the gas station. There's this little kerfuffle with, 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 uh, with Tex and Alfredo, and she's like, "Oh, well, what's going on?" And he's like, "Oh, he was, he was having a little peep show." And you were right, right. Out. And she immediately goes, "I think I'm going to puke." And my uh, out loud, I went, "Are you?" Because like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe you by what you just said. Yeah. I found out he was peeping on you when you were peeing, which should be very <laughs> upsetting. Yeah. Enough that you would say, "I think I'm going to puke," but at least disgusting. Can, yeah. Can we can we get another? <laughs> can we get another take? Were you upset and want to puke about this guy? Fucking <laughs> no, we're losing light, people. Yeah. Just, that was fine, but yeah. you, I will say something positive. Please do. Um, in addition to the speak and spell, that's actually not the only element of Leatherface that I appreciated. Um, there was something odd. I don't remember where I saw this. I, at some point, maybe it was one. I, I can't remember if it was on a bit on my Texas Chainsaw 40th anniversary, you know, blue or in like in the mix in one of my documentaries for the two part two, because I don't own three, obviously. Um, but somewhere I saw, I had exposure to something where I got to watch people talk about it, shooting it, talk about the lost gore and everything, but even talk about the original aspirations, which I do not remember. But, uh, one thing that I, and then we can talk about one more thing that actually really bothers me that I haven't mentioned yet. But the, one of the things that I liked, um, in addition to just Leatherface with the speak and spell, it's like, okay, go more in that direction. This was another one. Uh, I would have liked more explanation or background on this because if we are talking about like a franchise and this is the next leg for Leatherface making in the center, I remember seeing somewhere them saying, and I can't remember if they said it, I think it's implied in the movie that the little girl, Jennifer Banco's character is Junior's daughter. I don't think it's and ever said, but it is so implied in the movie. Because this is the thing that it's, the implication is with his predilection for private parts, which his mother is talking about, or the maternal figure, I don't know if she's his mother, but the maternal figure is going on about how 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 good he like you know his his deft hand with them and everything and uh uh, uh and I'm, first I'm wondering just kind of like so have you watched or have you seen like the aftermath and like all I can do is it brings me back to that Ed Gein thing where I remember that like you know he would like I won't get into it but there'd be like labia nailed to planks mm. of wood and painted and put bows on and horrible and it just put, put, puts me back into that and I'm just kind of like ooh gross um. And if that is his daughter, that means he, like, gr graduated from chainsaw simulation to, to the actual act. Actual P and V, yeah. Yeah, and, and <laughs> God, when you put it that way, oh, I'm trying to dance around it as much as I can. <laughs> but anyway, so actual that. Um. And now he's got, a, but and Lord knows her mother's dead. <laughs> like, oh yeah, she's probably stuffed, uh, you know, and mounted somewhere in the in in, in the in the house, but um, or yep. maybe outside, maybe the her garage. bones might be in her bedroom. Her bones might be in her bedroom. Yeah, but um, so I was just kind of like, okay, gross, but in, in, interesting enough, yes. but gross because his mother's saying it. But I'm watching his interaction with the girl and she seems very comfortable with him she even gives him a kiss on the mask yeah and um and again i was like i, I okay i mistakenly believed that uh of all people rob zombie was the first one to kind of cross this barrier because i felt like i had seen a maternal figure before kind of like be very forgive me, or it wasn't hard to imagine, like, what, where would a woman fit in the mix here? If we put in a female character in this family, well, we could always make her the mother. 
of course, you know, and my boys don't do anything wrong. My boys are good boys, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's the problem is with the world and you reject my boy and all that, you know, like, okay, that's all. And that's, you know, happened in subsequent films uh, after this one too. But with the little girl, I forgot she was in it. Um, and I forgot how much I think she works. Um, I credited Rob Zombie with Baby in House of a Thousand Corpses with kind of introducing or reintroducing a kind of bad seed quality since Baby was like basically like um, a little girl inside a woman's body yeah. who could be a sultry seductress enough to kind of like you know be the siren to like kind of like get people to come back to the house and everything and then once you were behind the closed doors yeah. there was the full like bad seed on acid and <laughs> um this girl uh jennifer banco felt like a very kind of more aggressive kind of like bad seed if she didn't have to hide anything yeah so i i, I want to give this movie and jennifer banco like the credit for being the first to kind of like introduce that dynamic in that kind of a family dynamic of you know like a family of ed Geens, if you will nice and girly squeaky clean but yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, like, but... I, I love her introduction when she's in her little room. Oh, yeah. She's got her doll with the baby head, and what's her name? Michelle's all you know, like trying to talk to her and everything like that. And I don't remember what happens. Like she kneels down in their close, and I think she has to sort of pet her doll or something, and she yeah. goes for it. And just as she does, and her guard is dropped, she's like look, noticing the doll and horrified. She sticks, I don't know, a knife, some kind of sharp instrument into her, and has this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know and she and I'm makes like, yakety yak creepy yeah and i'm like awesome okay yeah. no I more like of her. her more of her um and there's a little more of her but i i like again leatherface and her yeah. that would have been an interesting movie I, just leatherface and his daughter yeah <laughs> so and, and, and almost like frankenstein like him holding her hand and they're by the lake you know oh my god see see you're just making me because <laughs> i i see I, there's I, a there's a way to do it I do enjoy uh, the, the Texan Benny fight and she's kind of looking on and just like, you know, yeah. she, she's yeah. either miming a stabbing or miming a chainsaw, but she's right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that was it. it I, I had to actually pause it and rewind and listen to the line again. I'm like, am I hearing what I'm fucking thinking I'm hearing when they're like, maybe we should let junior have her or add her. And I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah. Because you know how he loves those private parts or he's real good with them private parts. And I was like, oh, are they saying what, what, I, and then I just wrote down Leatherface fucks. Well, technically, <laughs> there's I mean, another word for it. <laughs> right. It's not, I know. it's not consensual. I know. I know it's not. I'm just saying, like, he is an entity. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he's, he, he's moved into yeah. another realm. And again, I agree with you. Of it's, the it's, senses. I, it's icky. So I yeah. guess good job. But yeah. it's certainly interesting that that's like a new footnote, and that, again, the fact that the family they all seem to kind of encourage, like, oh yeah, he's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but also their verbiage of it, it's all icky. Yeah, so, it's terrible. So it's, it, um, it it works. I would I something more in that vein would have been interesting. Yeah. Um, I also uh, this is not the worst Leatherface for me. There are worse ones. Um, there, yeah. A lot of. Uh, as much nuance in this one compared to the first two but it's it, it still works at a very basic it passes mm -hmm. a certain bar which is if i was changing a tire in the middle of the night mm. and that fucking guy showed up and in that mask eve get me the fuck out of here it, it works yeah um, oh you're making me remember one more leather face but see now they're starting to come back to me i'm like well that wasn't bad like yeah. uh, when she's in this chair michelle with the nails and he puts the little headphones on her, uh, you know, like kind of like sweet. Yeah. And then she's just kind of like, mm -hmm. and he's like, mm -hmm. you know, like you, that's oh. bad. You're not playing fair. Yeah. You know, like I'm trying to be nice to you and you don't even appreciate it. And I'm glad Tinker, you have nails in your hands. <laughs> and it keeps going because Tinker yeah. takes the fucking headphones and throws them in the oven. I'm like, oh shit. Like there is an interesting little performative dynamic between some of these people. Like, again, this movie's not the worst like i there are things that i go oh yeah this is i don't own it but I, I i didn't i don't regret the three times i've watched this movie um i i won't say i regret them yeah. but i i don't i i, I it's so it's, weird because when they when it starts 
There's something about the nature of it opening. Oh, well, you know what? That's what it is. And it actually, it saddens me, but at least I get to see her again. It's Stretch. Stretch, yeah. I'm like, if the camera would just follow her, because she, <laughs> for the day she showed up, or the night, rather, <laughs> Caroline Williams showed up to shoot that, she brought Stretch with her. Yeah. Like, she has that laser focus and that determination and that strength, you know, in, in her poise and in her face and in everything about her is just so proactive. And if the camera just would have gone with her, oh my God, what kind of a movie would this have been if Stretch had had even even a supporting role. I don't want her to have a supporting role, but even if she had one sure, and, and just came in the last act or something, like so much more this movie could have been just with her presence beyond a cameo with no lines. Because she brought it. And I, like you mentioned, uh, talking about part two, I'm invested in this character enough and have enough faith in her. I mean, she withstood it. She blew up mm -hmm. the amusement park and swinging that, chainsaw herself as opposed to i mean and not to disrespect sally because bitch has been through a lot while she's right. sitting on the truck shrieking and everything but i'm i remember you saying to me a long time ago uh something terrifying about that is she's gone and she might never come back i don't know if you still feel that way but um i don't know if i feel like she ne she'll never come back she might laugh for the next 24 hours yeah, straight yeah in that moment, <laughs> i worry still like, I, yeah i worry about do you come back her after this but i think she might come to a semblance of some kind of like life after this but uh, with stretch i feel like she just needs to stop by a diner get a good breakfast maybe bu bu oh. bu bum a smoke off somebody i don't and she, oh i feel that way I, I feel like she'll be fine i don't she'll think be fine. she's as far gone as no but i think she's entered uh a line is crossed for her and she's now in like a new phase <laughs> she's forever changed into like a stretch 2.0 that like i don't think she lets go of that chainsaw like that chainsaw comes with her and oh all right yeah like i i, I, yeah. I, I think she's forever changed uh no i don't mean okay. like a bad guy i i but no, I, no, think, no, yeah. I think going forward she is as a is, is there, there there's there's gonna be a little not a total screw loose but uh, I wouldn't want to be on her bad side, you know. <laughs> she stepped into her power. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, um, I definitely buy that. But I mean, like, as far as her sanity, I feel like if she just gets a good breakfast dinner, gets the like, bums of smoke, and then just talks to some people, yeah. gets through it, I, she's going to be fine. And I like seeing her in, I mean, she looks intact, you know, and I don't, that doesn't seem out of the question for her yeah. to be like a full-fledged reporter, like chasing this story and i and i think she's not totally far gone but i mean when she's swinging that chainsaw around like she's not totally right <laughs> uh, no no she needs to come down yes but i think she um, uh, but i th i totally think she can that's the thing i guess that's what i'm saying there's an interesting thing about this movie that that made me there's it when when and i think it's this she's reporting but, and, and then we have these like two guys that are going down there and they're recovering this giant pit full of bodies. And they mentioned that they yeah. found like 40 to 50 bodies. Or he's like, there could be 40 to 50 in here. Right. And just like how the house had lots of previous people's bones. And just like yeah. how for the last 13 years now in this abandoned facility, this abandoned park that they're in, there's all sorts of bodies and parts. I love the idea that they're very, very, very busy and active. Um, but mm -hmm. and I forget if it's in two or in three. I think, it, but they mention how like they're like this. Was it was it when Lefty is at with the police? But they mention how like this was over here. But now the things are happening more like southeast, and I get the sense that like they've really traveled to like really vastly different parts of Texas. Mm -hmm. And the idea that each time they travel, they are very busy and. Uh, and then I even just thinking ahead to four, how even just like a few years later, they're able to then move into this house, this other house, and keep doing it. It this, there seems to me, I know the first one, you know, is a is kind of having a deconstruction of like the modern American family. And that we have themes of of the workforce and uh jobs falling by yeah. the wayside of industrialization. Yeah. But there's another thing to me that I don't think 
any particular movie intended to do. But when I look at all four of them, I can't help but think of this, the idea of, uh, okay, I've driven across country a few times before and I'm always fascinated about these long stretches of road where there's just fucking nothing. Um, sometimes you'll see, you know, a farm uh, or the, these little industrial things where it's like wind farms and facilities and there's like three or four little houses and then like nothing. And I, yeah. and I a few years ago did a road trip to San Antonio and back and specifically going through parts of Texas where there's so much open space and then just like a little diner and a few houses on like dirt roads. Cause, and we'd Google like, oh, where's, where's a good place to eat nearby? And we found some like really fun hole in the wall places. There seems to, when, when I saw that 40 or 50 bodies, I just kept thinking about like how empty and wide open the US is and how you could still in theory get away with being this murderous, this active and without even mm. trying to hide it that much. Like the first mm. Sawyer house is just a Texas house. Not the, the, it's just down a little road from the main road. Yeah. Um, the house <laughs> in, in this movie, in the third movie, isn't hidden away. Uh, no. In that same way that I love, uh, it's not the same thing, but you, know, you look at American Psycho and the idea that there is a monster and he's not hiding. He's in the suit. It's the 80s. He can even... He blends in so well with his environment that he can even be like confessing on the phone. And people don't even really buy it. And this idea yeah. that you have such a vast American landscape where there is so much in between the cities. There's so much mm. of nothing mm -hmm. that you could not even try to hide that, that much. You hide the bodies, but yeah, it's when you look at all four, <laughs> it seems to paint the idea of of the distance between things and how much you can get away with that's one thing that terrifies me to no end just on its own just well, so, well, yeah, well especially in the first movie it just feels like i'm, I'm outside but like i'm alone like we yeah. are oh my god when pam and is I, on the porch and he just pulls her right back and she's screaming full voice and it's broad daylight no one's coming yeah and broad yeah. daylight no one's coming and you're back in the house and you can't do anything about it. And now you're on a hook. Fuck yeah. That shit. That Fuck. bigger. Yeah. So that works for, for the whole franchise. Um, yeah. 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 I'll say one little thing. Uh, also, uh, I, I don't recall the cities that are being cited in one and two, but I know they mentioned like they're more su southeast or something mm. for, for one of them. But in this one, Thank God for the subtitles because uh, because uh, <laughs> Alfredo doing mm. his Boomhauer voice before we even had King of the Hill. You could, uh, <laughs> I could actually now understand what the fuck he's saying. Uh -huh. I highly recommend watching the third movie with the subtitles on whenever he's on screen. But when mm. he shows up at the end, when she's in the within the truck, he's like back there in Lubbock, and and he refers to the fact that they are in Lubbock or it's something about Lubbock, and I'm like, okay. Wait, does this movie take place in Lubbock? Because I've been there, and there is a lot more city than this. <laughs> well, this. Maybe, maybe not, not in 1990. Maybe not in 1990. <laughs> Who mm. knows? Yeah, no. Because <laughs> I guarantee you that the Buddy Holly Museum and all that was around in 1990. So, like, mm. no, no, don't buy it. Anyway, uh, that was the first time I ever heard specifically. Uh -huh. A Texas city in this in this franchise. Um, another nice little thing about this movie, in fact, all these movies, um, mm -hmm. they're all various degrees of like ninety to like ninety two minutes. Yeah. So even like with credits for some of them, you're only rocking like a you know, a, a, like Texas. This is my favorite one though. Texas Chainsaw Three is the only one that clocks in at like under ninety minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like eighty something, and the second movie ends and the credit starts. It was an hour sixteen. I was like, okay. Well, even if you don't like it, you're only in for an hour and 16 minutes. That's yeah. the length of a Disney movie from the 80s. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's really quick. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, yeah. No, and, uh, go ahead. No, I just had one question. Okay. What the fuck happened to Grandpa's eyes? 
they like they are exploded. just black holes. But the, well, it's been, it's been four years since two, and when uh, when you're exploded in a in a thing, your eyeballs go. I don't know. I don't know. But he didn't have eyes in one either. But he has Mr. Continuity. Two. He has them in two. They're all big and glassy. They like have yeah, you know those well, contacts yeah, that make no him look like he's got cataracts. This, there's no continuity with this fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I laughed out Someone loud else? when I saw him because it looked like they just sprayed black paint into yeah. the eye sockets it literally just like <laughs> actually appreciate and, um, that they didn't uh have him wake up and be lucid like look, we'll break it up a little bit right. um i yeah i love that benny showed up and started shooting the shit out of things um mm. and they actually like shoot grandpa like all right fine um <laughs> i did find it weird that uh tinker tinker gets his ear shot off whereas mom is fatally wounded grandpa right right out I went back and watched again. Tinker didn't look like he just got shot in the ear. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, Tex gets to leave. Anyway, I'm always, I just sort of wrote down like everyone who survives each movie because I was just interested in seeing like who the survivors are. And like <laughs> I considered Tinker a survivor, but like, I don't know, just looking around on the internet, they consider him. No, he dies. And the only thing that I could take from it, and I, and that was because the line struck me as so weird. But like he's telling Tex, like, go on out there get them whatever and he's like well okay i'll get i'll get bring back the meat and then yeah. he's like yeah i'll go get dinner i'll get i'll get the meat and he goes i'll be, I'll be in hell for breakfast and we're going i'll be in hell what the fuck does that mean and then i guess i realized like oh are you dying you're like you're not gonna be able to eat it. i get such a weird a lot of weird i don't understand I think it's There's hilarious that you know Tinker's name because I didn't know his name. He's barely a character to me. I, he I, kind of only exists in his relation to Tex. I looked, and... up, I looked up all the names of everybody just to start. Okay. Uh, yeah. Also, you know, they're trying to fix the, the, the tire and she's freaking out. And uh, what's her ex-boyfriend's name? Ryan. Like she keeps shining the flashlight and it's like, fine. All right, we're going to oh. do this. We're going to put the tire on. We're going to get out of here. Slow and easy. Because I'm about to lose my mind. Right. <laughs> slow and easy. I don't. You're trying to. You're slow and easy. I mean. Like, just, like don't about, rush it because you'll fuck it up. So yeah. just take so your time. I'm about time. to lose my mind. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. Yeah. I, also, why does Benny give them painkillers without telling them? <laughs> and then it'll knock you out. And then they're like, oh my God, how long has it been? I, I don't know. It feels like it's only been like five minutes. Cause yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no. Benny would be way more interesting if we went into like, why did he give them painkillers? You know, and not right. Them. Even However, why is he out there? Like I'm like, okay, give us a story. Come when on. He is he is a beacon of, of, of entertainment in this. When he's on when he's on screen, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's all I really have to say about three. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh four. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I, the, well, it's it's not good <laughs> but goddamn is it like a fascinating watch yes <laughs> and I, I i okay so here's my little history with this and it's a pretty brief history um i was watching cable in like 1996 or 1997 mm -hmm. and i just happened to catch and it said texas chainsaw massacre of the next generation and that was the first Texas Chainsaw anything I ever saw. And what I mm -hmm. turned on to was Renee Zellweger running in a field and a plane flies over her. <laughs> and, she, and I'm watching her in a limo. She goes to the hospital. And then it just ends with like a guy in a dress swinging a chainsaw and it ended. And I went, huh. I, I, did, I didn't know that this movie was going to be like in broad daylight with like a, like a plane. And I was very confused as to what I was watching. Didn't see it for years. Knew all about the history of it. I only watched it for the first time, like with three, about four or five years ago. What? Nothing will ever, you can never capture what it feels like to watch this movie for the first time ever again. You know what I mean? Like you only get, no, you only no, get no, that no, magic no. once. Because without, well, we'll get into it in a bit. But you're generally just watching, to various degrees, a bad movie. 
<laughs> and and then and then okay when darla starts yeah darla is going on about vilmer working for the illuminati the mm -hmm. first time you see this movie i don't know about you but i'm like okay she's crazy and full of shit and then the illuminati show up and i'm like yeah. <laughs> record scratch <laughs> what so to speak, they're a nameless group. They don't. They don't have I, a name. Here's the thing. I would love <laughs> to refer to them as the nameless group. I, like I, I would actually prefer to. Yeah. However, <laughs> the fact that Vilmer's truck says Illuminati on it, I now call it Illuminati because if the movie <gasps> puts it in, in in text in the movie, then I will know. <laughs> His truck says Illuminati on the door. Um, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no that that and so i actually really enjoyed watch so i watched this one two times also because i rented it on amazon and i mm. so glad i watched it a second time well for my third time ever but for the, the intents of this video the first and second viewings um because like i mentioned before the audio quality isn't great mm -hmm. and everything's just sort of being like yelled in this yeah. movie not yeah. so clearly um well we can get into the twists and turns of the illuminati later but um yeah you, it sounds like you definitely have an affinity i i this is the thing i saw it right on the heels of three like in 2003 and three must have like just kind of like pummeled me um because i conflated the two of them a lot i mean i remember that you know renee Zilliger was in this one and not the third one but i couldn't remember which one had the truck with the floodlights on it and then when i started watching three again i was like oh it's in this one for some reason i thought Matthew mcconaughey had a truck with floodlights on it too uh, i just probably conflated them and then i see <laughs> the uh, next generation and i'm like oh floodlights again it was a thing i didn't remember that it was a thing in both of them okay um all I really remembered from that viewing, um, cause I, re I remember uh, kind of enjoying it, but I, I remember Matthew McConaughey was interesting. I remember they tried to introduce another female character into the mix with the family and I wasn't vibing with it then. I feel like I get it more now, what they, maybe what they were going for. Maybe, maybe I just like it now, I don't know. But uh, back then it didn't work for me. I was just kind of like, oh, so she's like a, weirdo businesswoman who's there against her will she's like a prisoner but she's making the best of it by being with Matthew McConaughey and she's oh, I, not yeah. only like kind of suffering you know his abuse gladly but she seems to be turned on by huh I don't know what to do with that I don't um, think she's there it, against her will I think she's just no because Mr. I don't like, I, I found a name, I called him something else. Oh, I, I called him Big Horror. Because uh, <laughs> I didn't like the Illuminati. Illuminati because he seemed so obsessed with horror. It's all about horror. But um, he makes some kind of allusion to the fact that there was something she did, which is the reason she's there and that she's there and that she doesn't want to be, like, not that she doesn't want to be there, but that she was like assigned to be here and she'd probably prefer to be somewhere else but it does seem like she's making the best out of like the situation she's in so she's managed to would find, she who knows she's managed to find something her niche yeah yeah um I fulfilling just, I just, but uh, i just it, to me she was almost an extension of text where like text seemed like he didn't seem like i'm part of a crazy family like you know mm. he's not he's not going like get that bitch <laughs> like you know he <laughs> and then you just get to the family and you're like oh you're just like a slightly more put together member of the family like but you are just as crazy as these people but you you put on a good yeah. public face better than this one the other ones and i thought she was just another one where like oh so like you yeah you have this job and you wear this little business but like when you go home you don't go home to an apartment that looks like it matches your outfit like, right you right have, right right a stash of nice clothes that is your leather public. face mask yeah. is that suit and that but you're also i, I had forgotten she, how kind of crazy she was like the seeds they planted in the beginning with yeah, the boys driving by she's and the not comments 100 she was making. a no. perfect public face no you she's not and i didn't remember that weird. i didn't re i didn't remember yeah. that and i didn't remember her odd sympathy toward uh jenny 
Renee Zellweger's character, um, which I liked. I kind of liked it this time. I didn't, but all I remembered was basically Renee in glasses <laughs> in a prom dress. And I just remember I liked her work because it seemed like, um, I, I just remember feeling she didn't seem like your typical final girl, even though they kind of just buried her in tropes, but she seemed to kind of take them and run with them, no. literally. Oh my God, the way- Almost fight against them. But the way she, and also, yeah, there was something in her performance that felt, you know, it's singular, like unique. And I was like, good. And I got that again this time, but what I got even more were, was there were times where she's not connected and I don't care. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about her delivery with some lines. Oh, it was when, um, oh shit. When uh, she first runs into Darla and uh and she's telling her like you know like yeah, no he's out there he's ready she's just like oh, there's nobody out there it's fine she's like no he was out there with a chainsaw he was trying to kill me with a chainsaw and i just i don't know i love that i love her i have written I down oh all... no yeah. he had a chainsaw he was chasing me with a chainsaw the guy with record yeah. killed... <laughs> the guy with record killed sean <laughs> <laughs> and um also, I forgot about the little comedic nods, but anyway, but I, so I saw it that time and I remember I liked it more than three. I, I went, I haven't seen it since. So I went back in this time and uh, liked so much more and forgot so much. And I think I made the mistake of assuming it, and maybe it was, but uh, it didn't feel that as much like this time, like a reboot. Like just kind of like a Absolutely. let's take the formula from the first one and just kind of recycle it with some different things. But the thing is, it and, and the first time I saw it, it totally felt like that. I was just kind of like, oh, this is like a campier version. I don't even know if campy is the word, but it, you know, a less real version than of 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 the first one. But for the for a new generation, so maybe that's what they're trying to. I don't know. I, I couldn't figure it out the first time, but I just kind of rode rolled with it and I was fine. This time. All of the differences from the first one stood out to me and made me so happy. Um, I think um, in addition to LG that Heather is, she shares the mantle with LG as my favorite victim, like, you know, must die, mm -hmm. uh, favorite victim of the franchise because of her point of view. I love the fact that she's obsessed with death. She's got all her lines like, what if we all died? We, we could write a song notes. about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and also and, the fact that when, when, after they get in the car wreck and they've, they've pulled the guy yeah. out, she, she gets out of the car and she does like this little girly, like little shuffle, this little wiggle. Yeah. And she's like, is he dead? Did he die? Yeah, yeah, I have that right here. Is he dead? Did he die? Um, <laughs> And I love, and uh, Lisa Newmeyer is uh, her name. I fucking love her because in addition to that, like for, for, for camp purposes, I, I appreciate it because she showed up to work. She's on a enough of a level, a similar level with Renee that like I'm, I buy that their two characters are in the same movie and in the same world, even though they're, you know, vastly different people. But the way she talks about her, it, I don't know if, it, I don't know if it's because I'm a bitchy gay guy. I, <laughs> I fucking love her. But then later, when she's just kind of babbling on and I want to call him Biff, Barry, um, <laughs> bully guy um, yeah. is like, just kind of like on her about like, shut up, would you just whatever. And she's like, I know, I, like I, what bitch. was it? No, she said, it's, but it's not just I'm a bitch. Oh, she says, I act, I, I just act them so people will like me. <laughs> and, I'm, and she went, to, she went on from there. I didn't, I couldn't yeah. write it all. I wanted to enjoy it, just drink yeah, it yeah. in. But I just, I just, I wrote, I love Heather. She, and I wrote, she may be the most conscious, perceptive character in the franchise in that like truth teller way like that. And we're on the road and I think I saw a thing. Yeah. She, yeah. That unfiltered, like you see things and you're, you're, I mean, you're not going to make it. I know you're not because of the role you've been assigned, you know, the cabin in the woods, right. you know, <laughs> role that you've been assigned. You're not the virgin you're uh, you know the whore but um and even though she's not but um i uh even to, oh yeah it's just that exchange between her and barry carry me piggyback just for a while and he just tells her lose 20 pounds yeah. i'm laughing my ass off just watching her bounce off this guy who she even 
there, there's something about the tropes they're so mired in yes that it has a meta level to it and she can it even co- she can even comment on this is the reason I'm attracted to you because this is the framework through which I, you know, watch relationships because my I don't really see it in my parents. And yeah, all that. I'm just like, I could watch a whole movie just about Heather right. and the leather, the, the, the leather faces. <laughs> yeah, Cause I love her explanation of like, like, so uh, Jenny like called you on the blue balls, but like, no, I'm a bitch though too. Like, yeah, I'm not putting out necessarily and because my mom was in a relationship that afforded her things and you're this guy in the school and i'm with you for that and like yeah yeah for such a you know yeah she is very i i I almost i prefer that scene because i like her as a character in that scene whereas on the whole i'm more like what that actress is doing with that character and you're right absolutely is meta i i do feel that kim is it henkel was kind Mm. of aware of what horror had become in the 80s and early 90s as far as yeah. these cabin in the woods tropes so he wrote like the kind of nerdy virginal character he wrote the ditzy girl he wrote the shitty bully my only problem mm-hmm. is the uh the other guy uh sean yeah he barry mentions we know that you two don't fuck or anything you guys just hang out and you get high all the time i'm like yeah i think on paper he was supposed to be like the stoner and instead he's just like a guy the straight laced guy yeah and i'm like no they should have cast a girl oh hey guys what's happening I mean, like you really would have had that group more but they mentioned that they had yeah. to get high in this car and i'm like this guy's nothing he's a, <laughs> like, like a nothing. he's he's a he's nice jo- he's guy. he's joe vanilla yeah yeah um <laughs> yeah barry has some incredibly awful terrible lines but good job for, for writing the shit that comes he's out of fucker's great. mouth right yeah um, i love I, I can't remember the last time i loved watching a bully that much yeah yes. yeah lose 20 pounds like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> he's a fucker um but but <laughs> I, I really do enjoy that first scene where like they're leaving in the car we yeah. set up and create all sorts of little like instantly i love jenny because she's like you don't get fucking blue balls you can't die yes. and, like he's he's lying to you i'm like yeah this fucking girl yeah and i know that like she's also timid like she's trying to find this she's trying to speak up and t- say the truths of things but his defensiveness uh, calling her like everyone's perfectly laying out who they are in that scene yeah yeah except for sean um <laughs> <laughs> well he's joe vanilla yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah what a great introduction for for jenny as a character and 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 that all continues um yeah yeah uh yeah i i love that she's she not the whole time she's obsessed with death but i love that it kind of comes up and that people look at her weird she's like, what if we die in this car accident they write a song about us and, i know I yeah love, i love her but yeah barry's the worst uh of the of the four broad teen tropes but uh i think i think <laughs> the part that gets me the worst but also makes me laugh the, i'm not laughing but when he turns around he like reaches for jenny's tits in her he's like what are you what are you afraid people are gonna see you have tits Barry, and I love this. What girls have tits? <laughs> like, we're gonna ignore the fact that I'm being a molester right now. Like, I get to right. that you don't understand my truths right now, and you can't handle the fact that girls have tits. And then I can, I can, I, I'm on a level that understands that. Yeah, <laughs> this what? is one movie that, like, when I was watching this last time, because I only got to watch it the once, because I know. Um, there's a sh- uh, Scream Factory edition. Yeah. I'm getting it. I'm. I need to commit. I've thought about it. Bridges of this movie to memory. I need. I, I can't well, do it now. But when I start, you know, a new influx of uh, income, uh, that's going to be one of the first things I'm going to want to buy and and watch religiously. Yeah. Well, also, it has the extended cut. Um, yeah. That, yeah. Because which actually, I saw one scene, and I'm like, oh, is it her and her that, dad, like the beginning scene? Yeah. Because I've her never step seen dad, it. Her stepdad. Right. But I know that, like, because some people wonder, like, how is she reacting to this family the way she's reacting? It's like, well, if you know about the deleted scene with her stepdad, like, she's kind of been yeah. some shit already. Yeah, but, he's gross. Whereas in the and it's cut, dark as fuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know where to. Uh, let, let's let me let's talk about some of the other people in the clan. Right. Um, oh first boy. Of all, no, no offense to this actor. It's just the way it's written. I fucking hate W.E. in this. 
Oh, you do? Yes, because there, there is, when it comes to cliches of cinema, <laughs> probably the cliche I hate the most is the asshole who speaks in quotes in literature. <laughs> and this guy is that, but dialed up to 11, where yeah. 80% of his dialogue, he only has like yeah. two or three lines that are his own thoughts. Yeah. Um, and every time he's, you know, well, I say this and then Walt Whitman or, you know, what, just like, oh, I want to fucking go and put him in the meat. Can someone kill him? I can't stand people who think they're all sh hot shit for speaking in quotes. I fucking hate them. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck W.E. I didn't feel that way. I felt like, because I wrote down the first thing he said. I didn't write what he said, but I just wrote W.E. quoting Ulysses S. Grant. And then I just wrote Southern Pride. Makes sense. But then it went on. He quoted on, Machiavelli, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Voltaire, John Paul Jones, Samuel Johnson, and Shakespeare. And I think there were a couple that I didn't put in. Yeah. <laughs> but I I don't know. I embraced yeah. it. I, I it, it was not hard for me to love no, this. To also because W.E. felt like just a more... Not interesting, but just more entertaining uh, 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 counter to, you know, like the, the heads of the family than Tinker was. I don't even know who Tinker is, you know, like well, as a person. He makes a dope ass chainsaw or he adds the chrome to a dope ass chainsaw is what he does. I'm not going to like that. <laughs> um, uh, Vilmer is fascinating to me. Um, yeah. Especially because the first time you see it, and um, <laughs> the, the second, the second half of this movie, um, it may sound like I'm being a little negative, but I also do have a, this morbid want to to get the Scream Factory edition because mm -hmm. um, so much of this movie, even when it's not good, it's fascinating. Yeah. Um, the second half of this movie is very loud, yes. very obnoxious. But also mm -hmm. very, like to me, it's dull. It's it, them yelling at each other in the kitchen. It feels like it goes on forever. And then they go into the, the dining room and it's like the, everybody's just yelling this nonsense, just this shit, just fucking, it's so dull to me. And it goes on and on. Um, uh, having said that though, once, like the, the second time I watched it for this viewing, like I was aware that, you know, there's like an Illuminati scheme, but once I really, the second time I watched it, I watched all of it thinking just about what the Illuminati wants, what Vilmer's role is and how so much of this is performative, how so much of this is also not performative because they've done this before, but like, this is him getting sloppy. This is him getting lazy. This is him where the Illuminati <laughs> needs to come in and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're supposed to scare her. What right. What are you doing? What is this? Because mm -hmm. I'm watching it going, what is this? <laughs> so it, I actually liked it more the second time. Just knowing that this is Vilmer like fucking up and really going off and, and really trying to scare mm -hmm. this girl who like the problem is they got a girl who like can, won't, won't put up with this shit. Yeah. And, but here's, here's all the noise. Here's all this bravado that like I think I think is going to work. And uh, the fact that he's so maniacal, it's a very entertaining performance, but there's all these little, little things that I just giggle at. Um, yeah. You know, I, I love the, the shotgun in the mouth. Yeah. And then, you know, the, <laughs> but my favorite part, probably my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. She leaves, she gets out of the house from the first floor gets in the car, backs up to the house. Mm -hmm. Two things worth noting. One, Matthew McConaughey jumps from the roof and goes, Burr! <laughs> I can rewind, I have rewound and watch the Burr! like five times <laughs> and we'll just giggle. <laughs> the best ADR of a <laughs> line. Like of all the, oh, that burr is a <laughs> for the ages. <laughs> okay. I, I love that he's like, well, let me run up the stairs and get out the window and then get up on the roof just so I can go like, just open up the fucking front door. Come on. I, uh, he's... And then the leg thing. Yeah. The leg, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. It's funny, so I'm not complaining. 
Yeah, you, but I don't understand you've got either. An apparatus on your leg. I don't understand. Like it made sense, I guess. Like the first, like the first time I saw it, I didn't think about it. But like a remote, they're all TV remote controls. Yeah. So unless they're specifically wired receiver, first of all, I don't understand why TV remote controls. More importantly, more importantly, I don't understand why remote controls at all. Yeah. The battery source, visible, electric, helps them walk. What do you need to do anything to it for? Nothing. <laughs> like a sense. Even before Renee Zellweger is, is fucking with them, before you're fucking with them, why do you have the, I don't understand. It doesn't, I don't get it. I don't get it. But you know what? When he's on the ground and she's fucking with him, it's a highlight of the movie. And I, I, I could watch him, his leg spaz out and her just fucking with him. I could watch another five minutes of that. Whose skull was he standing on? I can't remember right now. My memory's leaving me. But he oh, was he standing crushes. on some... Yeah. He crushes, he crushes Heather's skull. Okay, Heather's. Heather um, gets thrown on a thing and then no, yeah, Heather a meat hook and then gets fucking Heather dies fire. five times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the last uh, she time also, that Heather dies. She also, yeah. that, that was a surprise to me is I think the last time we saw her, she was on a hook. And then yeah. later in the movie, she's just on the middle of the road. I was like, oh, I guess she escaped. Thank you, movie. Yeah, movie. right, yeah. Yeah. I, oh, so, that's not, I was fine. I was just kind of like, wow, she had her own little movie going on. She really did. No, she gets a little on fire and then she gets her head stomped. Yeah. So, okay. I thought like that was the, the, the explanation, explanation for the remote controls to his leg were when he was crushing her skull to be able to do things like that because he couldn't do that just with his own lame leg. So he needed something that was going to have a little firepower in it. So if he wanted to stomp on something or kick down a door or whatever he's going to do, just he could have like a little extra kind of like a little you know a little behind it so i don't know i just felt like it was more high octane and um and it was because he crushed her skull yeah um me. Oh, me. Sorry. um but i love the fact uh humor wise i love when jenny's in that trunk and they're at the drive through and darla's getting the pizzas and darla gets back there and she just says you shut up and quit kicking my car and Jenny's like, okay, but I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Just so compliant. I don't, usually don't like compliance in my final girls, but there was something so removed and from any realm of, of reality that I, very I, in line I, with her I, character. I appreciated it. From yeah. Like, the, like, like you can't, you can't get cancer from blue balls. Like it's very. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, oh because yeah he talked about prostrate cancer bury the yeah. douche but um i love okay because also the thing about the yelling and everything like that i was just kind of like oh you know we're back in a house of chaos i didn't yeah, feel we i did no it's not absolutely not but it felt closer to it than three did yeah the house the house of chaos and three didn't feel chaotic. That's where I felt the loud and where I felt the bored and I felt the thing. There's something about like get being, I guess maybe Jenny was my way in and just like it was, it needed to be for me, needed to be so chaotic and so obnoxious and so uh, repetitive, like just a cycle of it for her to completely lose it and just get, and just lose the role. <laughs> a mm -hmm. victim and just kind of like step into i'm running the show now motherfucker and yeah, I, yeah and, I, and i love when she then, like gets up and is basically like no like yeah totally dug it. and i love i love how game i don't love uh vilmer uh <laughs> he's too he's he's too much of a misogynist for me to love him and he's too destructive i remember mentioning to you at some point after i saw this movie that um I thought it was hot the first time I saw it where he like opened up his shirt and just started cutting himself because yeah. I knew it was fake. And also, it was, I don't know, it was just kind of like any excuse to see Matthew McConaughey disrobe. But I think I remembered it more so than he did. <laughs> like I'm watching it and I'm just kind of like, oh, I can't see anything. He's just going like this, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. But um, maybe, I don't know, I was, I was in a Winnebago alone. I was probably just, you know, thirsty. Um, I'm thirsty now, but not that yeah. thirsty, I guess. Anyway, but um, so I was just kind of like, okay, but Vilmer um, never stopped being uh, entertaining to watch, even though I don't agree with a lot of like what he does and I don't like him the way I like, particularly into um, Drayton, 
you know I, I really by this point though I have to say in the franchise like I'm really missing Drayton uh a Drayton just somebody who can be the head in, in, with a little more control like Drayton doesn't isn't in control of uh nubbins or the bubba or <laughs> of chop top much but things seem a little calmer with him like like Vilmer's like an agent of chaos so he wants everybody screaming he wants everybody yeah. but at least it was i mean but it was different like they weren't trying to like cast Matthew McConaughey. i understand he was supposed to play i think one of the guys i don't know if it was barry or if it was the other one they like wanted to see him for one of the boys and they wanted and they actually wanted to cast him and he said i'm more interested in Vilmer. can i play that and they gave it to him um and i'm glad they did he Me did I, I i prefer watching and him play that i don't know if it's in the script or if he did it himself he probably did it himself but i do love that he enters uh the dining room with an all right all right all right yeah of course that's nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> um oh. then then big horror comes in. Are you ready to take the tour, the turn? Um, or? <laughs> well, okay. Before we go there, let me just say that. Yeah. Um, I agree with you that it's very much uh, it, it's 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 a sequel, but it's also Kim yeah. Hankel wanting to sort of remake the, the original movie, mm -hmm. but still that salty opening crawl, where uh, and apparently two un two unrelated instances that apparently matter. Like it's so so bitter so sassy so salty yeah and i guess there's a part two and three <laughs> um but yeah i mean literally like in this movie there's a group on the road and someone gets hung on a hook and we go in a house and we jump out a window and there's a chain yes and, uh, yeah. they have a big escape uh but one of the weird little things is you, you made a movie about a chainsaw a movie called texas chainsaw massacre about cannibals where they order pizza and don't eat anybody <laughs> and leatherface if, if i'm not mistaken doesn't fucking use the chainsaw on anyone and so like the end uh, they're on the road and yeah he's swinging the chainsaw but like there is no chainsaw action in this fucking movie and there's no cannibals that eat pizza it's it's a very uh interesting <laughs> <laughs> um and before we jump on to the, the, I just, I wanted to agree with you. Uh, I, I remember when we were talking about how in the first movie, like Sally is in it. So when we get to the, the gas station scene, like she's still, she's indoors, yeah. but she's coming down from all that and, and panicked. And in this one, Renee Zellweger screaming and then she gets into the little real estate office bungalow. And she's like, no, yeah. no, put yeah. a chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it is, a, a delightful delivery. Uh, <laughs> um, she runs too. My God, I, I I, no one has run like Jenny in this franchise. Like her, she she she's you know Barry Allen. I love. <laughs> right, she is let, booking it like she is outrunning someone. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let me say this about Mr. Well, here, here's what I'll say before I let you really go off on the whole Mr. Horror thing. Okay. Even with even without getting into the, the concept, but just to lay the groundwork, there is a, yeah. a sort of a pseudo Illuminati group mm -hmm. that uh, that that Vilmer works for mm -hmm. that he has been tasked by, where they do what basically has happened for other Texas Chainsaw counters where they, and there needs to be a final girl, it's kind of Cabin in the Woodsy, but that they need to scare her because they want people to have such a visceral enlightenment kind of reaction from horror. Right. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that Mr. Horror shows up. And before he does that, I'm watching this going, this isn't scary, this isn't terrifying, it's just all kind of obnoxious. And then he shows up and says, hey, this is supposed to be scary. It's supposed yeah. to be horror. Yeah. And I'm just thinking, the irony. <laughs> the irony <laughs> of what he's saying. But then, but then I don't even get to enjoy the irony because you wrote it 
for him to show up and say this. So that means it's supposed to not be scary. Yeah. So then if that's intention, here's my thing is it, 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 I can't be on the same, like I need to still be kind of scared and not be on the same journey as him. But instead I'm very aware of how lame this operation is. I'm very aware of how not scary it is. Mm -hmm. And it sucks that I'm on the same page as Mr. Horror. I mm -hmm. think it'd be fun. It'd be funner if I wasn't aware of how shitty this is when he comes in. <laughs> because then if it's intentional, then like then what am what are we watching? If it is supposed to be this, if it is supposed to be not scary and a giant bungled mess of noise and he's disappointed in in in, in Vilma for all his this shit. Then what am I watching? Mm. I don't know. I mean, it's neat that it goes in a different direction. Yeah. It, I applaud the movie for trying something, even though I think it's a weird approach. But I, but at the end of the day, it's, it's <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Um, I uh, posted a question on my Instagram asking people, mm. uh, do you think this was about something? more bigger you know than just you know horror and i believe only two people did <laughs> i was one of them. them yeah but here's and here's, the everybody else is just like fuck no it's just can i know, explain my answer flashy dashy if you want to sure because um i i, I to me it, it, to me it's not black and white enough um or whatever like i don't actually believe that there's so much more going on <laughs> but i believe that it was trying to do something more so okay. I, could, I couldn't in conscious say no. Oh. The answer isn't no, but the answer isn't truly really yes, because right. I don't think there is much more going on. Well, I mean, I, and I don't either. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like, okay, here's your camp fest. And now here's a little something. Remember when our movies used to have like social issues in them, you know, because three did not for me. Um, I didn't feel like it was about anything broader. And I thought, it's, we did, I mean, there's so much more about like one that I could go into, but I won't because we're talking about this movie. But like one and two both seem to be about kind of like the direction the country was going in and about, you know, people. Um, and I love how they were both able to do it in completely different ways. And this one, it, again, maybe doing it in because it's the fourth installment coming in the 90s. I'm tempted to call it like the Batman and Robin at this point of the franchise, just big bombast and, you know, no depth. But yeah. there is like a little something dropped in for me that I felt like it was like, only Ken Hankel would have done this because he wrote and directed this one. So I'm like, okay, you're trying to say, I felt like he was trying to say something about like the, the the corporatization of horror and everything because i felt it in the 90s that this is why we leaned so hard into indie cinema in the 90s yeah. because that because... 80s for no because that 80s formula that worked so well where everything was consumer friendly and everything was about a brand and everything was like, hey, look, toys for your kids. But it had taken over and because there used to be heart, or at least I felt it, it used to be heart in, in, in the 80s. And then in the 90s, heart was harder to come by. You people, that's why people started going toward indie, indie cinema and why studios started developing like indie wings because um, all of a sudden we're getting a lot of, you know, stupid screwball comedies stupid you know like i mean i don't want to say they're all stupid but because i don't believe they're all stupid but it was more the exception um than the rule that studios were producing new things it was more kind of like more of the same things were getting um uh, uh censored out the wazoo so i just felt like it was kim hankel also as the writer like moving in and saying like Texas Chainsaw Massacre can't be made in 19... I mean, it was released in 96, but it made it in 93, Four. 94. Yeah. Released in 94. Um, so 
Texas Chainsaw could not be made in 1994 or in the mid 90s. Let's just say that because too many other minds are going to get in the way. Too many hands are going to, you know, demand something to be recycled that you can't recycle or they're not going to get what made the thing special at all and just kind of like, you know, tick boxes saying not that, not that. We're, if the censors won't let us have that, you know, it's just going to turn into something. And I want someone to walk into this room, call all these people on their shit, their obnoxious shit, in a way that they'll listen, that Jenny can't make them. And then he will truly horrify her, because it horrified me, just seeing his little yeah. hooks on his belly and shit. And the creepiest part is when he licks her. He, yeah, big the horrors only, licking on Jenny's face. The only part of the movie that gives me horror. Yeah. yeah. But I love what follows because she escapes and she's booking it. And then that plane comes out of nowhere. <laughs> the plane, aforementioned plane. Mm -hmm. And Leatherface is chasing after her with the chainsaw and everything like that. I, I, and we can, get, we can talk about Leatherface a little bit, um, uh, yeah. this incarnation. We still need to. Um, yeah, but... I love the fact that she ends up in this limo with big horror. And um, I still, I really don't know his name. I'm not just calling him that to be cute. I don't know his name um, and I don't care. But <laughs> she's sitting there because he's big horror to me, but she's sitting there and he starts waxing philosophical also. And uh, the only thing I wrote, because there were a lot of lines after poor Mr. and Mrs. Spottish got it. Um, he says, maybe it's disappointment that keeps us going. And again, I felt like I was getting the voice of Kim Hankel looking at this franchise and seeing like, you know, I don't feel like, I think what he was saying was, I don't feel like anybody has recreated the magic of one. And here, even I'm trying to do it and I know it's impossible. So I'm just gonna do what I, you know, make what I want with this framework, but I'm gonna let the audience know it can't happen. Sorry, folks. You know, you came. I hope you like what you saw, but you're not going to get another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But just because you're disappointed, just because I'm disappointed, doesn't mean we stop. There's going to be another Texas Chainsaw Massacre down the road. And there was, and he produced it with Toby Hooper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and however you feel about that one, it's just about like, maybe it just keeps us going. Maybe it'll motivate somebody to say, you know what? I don't like that. I'm going to make my own. You know, whether I make my own Texas Chainsaw movie or whether I make my own Texas Chainsaw-esque movie, I'm going to make my own. So I felt like it was about something bigger. And I liked it. <laughs> I laughed really hard when you said that, you know, it was everything was becoming corporate. Um, yeah. <laughs> because, again, because if you're stating what was going on at the time, Eddie, there is nothing more 90s than saying. Yeah. This is so corporate, man. Yeah. Everything's yeah. corporate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, Eddie. Don't sell out, it's, man. It's, in this <laughs> studio film. Is this far away from going, man, it was it's yeah. me, it's, it's 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 about the music. <laughs> you know, when you said that, I had a flashback to like Lindsay Ellis ripping yes. off fucking yes. reality bites and rent yeah. and, and rent, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> look pretty and do as little I'm as possible. I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw that shit on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Horror got so corporate, man. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it, it. That is definitely something that can easily be inferred. That's not a stretch. Um. But, but the lingering effect is still such a such a strange beast mm -hmm. such a broad weird thing and also speaking of broad and weird this direction they went with leatherface yeah which again they reached out for gunner hansen and like thank god yeah. they didn't i don't want him if this is what he was <laughs> going to be in um yeah maybe i can't just I, this is probably my second from the bottom <laughs> leatherface Okay. Um, I, just because there's not much. I get it. He's not going to have a chainsaw, and I and I, and that's fine. Basically, he just screams a lot. Yeah, yeah, he wails. Yeah, that actually disturbs me. 
No, it does. It just annoyed me. Um, no, it disturbed me. I was like, ooh, ooh, what's no, going and on? And again, everything you, styled huh? up. We have our, our, our first kind of butchery outfit, and then we have another <laughs> outfit, and then we have, yeah. like, we're going to lean into more than the previous, but like, the pr I'm dressing up all pretty for dinner, but now I, I, I added the tits to my outfit, and I, I don't care for the scream. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I got to okay. say... Um, Robert Jax is the name of the actor, and I saw an interview, old vintage interview a, he did. He's a musician or a DJ or something. Uh, something, I, I, I yeah. didn't get that, no. but he was uh, speaking to Sandra Bernhardt, of all people. Oh. They seemed very chummy, seems like they might actually be friends, and that's why she had him on, whatever she was hosting. And <laughs> they're talking about the movie. Uh, he talked about like working with Renee and about like going out shopping with her with bruises on her neck that he gave her from like choking her <laughs> and um but she she ro rolled with the punches as it were both girls did uh both her and uh lisa newmeyer i gotta learn her name because she's worth it um but uh about how they both learned when they were being thrown around they would actually help by kind of like throwing their weight with it so they wouldn't get hurt so the other people wouldn't feel bad about hurting them you know that kind of thing but um, when asked about like the three, he put it like, I play three different leather faces. Mm -hmm. um, much more so than, you know, there were in the original, even though they're there. But talk, he made some kind of mention about the fact that like the time wouldn't have allowed for this kind of a leather face to exist. And I'm like, all right, so we're, I mean, and I remember the first time I saw it, I got like an odd, like, what are we doing here? Like, are we, <laughs> are we, leaning more into um the i'll just use like a dated term that would have been used at the time not in context just the transvestite yeah. aspect of it all well um, i feel like in the 90s they did think we're leaning more into the transness of it but when you look at it now you're like you're not you, you just no he's more overtly feminine that's yeah it. And if, yeah. and if you're going, well, yeah, look how trans he is. Like, no, he's just screaming. Yeah. No, and um, now but, it's I just mean, an address. Yeah. And, and, you're not saying and, anything, and you're not evolving anything. And, and clutching the face, again, in a very kind of campy, like, I mean, you know, like Faye Dunaway is Joan Crawford kind of, you know, way. <laughs> you know, but I mean, yeah. you know, she doesn't do that, but you know what I mean? Like, she's a Susan Hayward in her own movie. Um, but no, I remember, uh, even before seeing this, I remember the the, the poster with with Leatherface. And, yeah, with and, the, the chainsaw and the, the legs. long legs. Yeah, and I remember knowing what I knew about Ed Gein, and specifically, yeah, you know, putting on a suit and dressing like a woman that actually had like a vagina and wanting to be his mother and all that. I expected this movie to have a little more to say with Leatherface, mm -hmm. knowing that there's going to be a more feminine version mm -hmm. of Leatherface, and that really. They're, they're not going to say anything. Very disappointing, actually. No. Yeah. Maybe disappointment is what keeps us going. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the case, holy shit, when it comes to the fucking next one. <laughs> Go um, for it. But no, Go but for I, it. Yeah, no, but I, I just will say, uh, when I first saw this movie about four or five years ago, I was surprised mm -hmm. how much, I guess, I liked it. Like, I didn't just, like... And to yeah. this day, there, I, I spent a lot of this time not saying as many great things, but I think I started there. there things work, things are amusing. I yeah. don't hate it. Um, uh, do, you, do you think you have a, a lot to say about the next one? Because we can either make this quick or we can end now. And then I, I can back. make it quick. Okay. I can make it quick. Okay. Um, so they made a remake, and and there it, it's definitely easy for me. What two thousand three, two thousand three? Yeah, two thousand three. Man, in two thousand three, I was definitely, and I'm definitely in in the heat of early twenties, and Michael Bay is the Antichrist of cinema, you know, and uh, and fuck Platinum Dunes, mm -hmm. fuck anyone for remaking Texas Chainsaw, and fuck Michael Bay for producing a remake of Texas Chainsaw. Uh, I remember seeing the trailer for this in a packed theater. And when it, you know, the trailer ended in the big bold letter of Texas Chainsaw, people were cheering. And I'm like, you awful, terrible monsters. You, you uncultured pieces of shit. 
<laughs> I'm like, this movie's gonna be a big. I know this movie's gonna be a hit. I just listen to this fucking crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's one thing for me to watch this movie in 2004 yeah. and, and hate on it. And again, I don't want to do this series uh, and, and just constantly shit on things. I want to focus on things that I like. So, uh, but I will say, I, I think this movie is is not watching it. I watched for the second time ever, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't fully use the words bad. Okay, I won't. But I do think it's fucking worthless. <laughs> it's a okay. worthless endeavor. All right. Um, and I have a few more things, but that's just my, my preamble. It's, it's, still not, it's still not great. Yeah. Viewing it um, at 40, I still don't, I don't forgive it for much. Um, I have to say, I remember the first time I saw it, because I was like, I'm going to give it a chance, because it's a remake of a movie that I love, and it's not, it's not going to be the movie I love. I remember even seeing, I don't think, I don't even remember if I saw the trailer, but I saw the poster just with the Leatherface design. And I was like, that's not Leatherface. Nope. <laughs> All right, so I know exactly what I'm going into um, because I, I, that was one thing about the design. I was just kind of like, how can you make a grittier Texas Chainsaw Massacre that where his mask is less horrific like it looks like it is trying so hard. It looks like it's designed. It's got, it looks like it's rubber. It's not. It's got that's evil oh, because uh, we didn't get to talk about the evolution of the mask, other which we, we don't have to. But the thing about the first one, why it's my Leatherface, aside from Gunnar Hansen's performance and what he does and everything like that, the paper thin, yep. dried out, cool. wall, and the flakiness. The the yes, the eyelashes sticking out at the top of it in that close up and just the nature of it. And then the, the powder on the white face, the, the, the slapdash, but you know, childlike way she puts the root, he puts the rouge on and, and everything. And the mother, the, the matronly figure, the grandma with the, the, the wig, whatever. Um, it was always terrifying. It's still terrifying. I don't like looking at it too long, but I'm almost like, mm. this one, I, 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 it's, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. So there's that. Um, and I feel like the whole movie in its own way, sometimes I think it works better than others, but I think the whole movie is designed. And I think this one, because uh, four was more like, again, like kind of a mind fuck, even more so than like the, the fever dream of two, <laughs> three was like a movie, but not. This is definitely feels like a movie. And in addition to uh, everything I mentioned about the design, it, Marcus Nispel was office, obviously a uh, music video director with the way the, way the light shoots oh, through obvious. things and everything like that. I mean, and I don't hate it in every shot that he does it. Like there's some things that I'm just kind of like, well, that's an interesting way to go with the lights, the backlighting of the house at night when it's just, you know, and it's just the silhouette to create the silhouette of the house. Totally unrealistic, but stylized. I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but the biggest thing about the thing that makes it feel like a movie is I think the bookends of it with Aaron being the one on the side of the road at the end of the movie, yet she's the one who stop, makes them stop the van to pick up. Um, did she have a name? The Hitchhiker. Yeah. Um, and with her, like, you know, she, she, she reveals that she knows how to hot, I think how to hotwire a car, or no, how to pick the lock to get into the bathroom because she's got brothers. Mm-hmm. And I, I, she so knows how to hotwire a Anytime a girl has a skill, they have yeah. to explain because <laughs> my dad and my brother I fucking hate well, it. Well then, because I also felt like that was kind of like a lie, like a cover up, like it's easier for me to say that, but when she can hotwire the car, it's because she was in juvie. So, and then it pays off at the end, you know, pays off at the end when she knows how to hotwire the cop car and um and the the mislead with her we think she's in the truck but no she's in the cop car and then she runs over uh leatherface and the baby is popped up in the passenger seat suddenly Mm -hmm. somehow uh not dying and not rolling off the seat (laughs) and it's not in the seat in the frame immediately preceding that where we can clearly see an empty passenger seat it's like plopped (laughs) upright too like yeah it's just and it's literally facing her like "Ah, ah, ah," you know (laughs) it's like what is happening and there wasn't a shot of her with her arm out like holding yeah right 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 so and there's no baby seat there's no i mean it's just safe we're supposed to think the baby's safe now, even though she's speeding in a cop car that just ran somebody over. Um, anyway, so 
largely a movie, unlike the original. So already it's different. Um, the things that I thought kind of worked or that were interesting at least were, if you're going to remake it, interesting to make the, the hitchhiker, you know, who they bring in to kind of mix everything up and create the ripple effect of the movie is now a victim and not one of the oppressors. Um, I liked the shot through the van where they're all screaming and the gun smoke coming out of her mouth and stuff. And the aftermath. I like the fact that they're all dealing in their own ways. Um, and also I felt like the Saw's family, uh, even though it's spoken in two, uh, largely kind of became the moniker for the Sawyers, for the Hewitt family in this incarnation. I feel like the mother speaks it, Luda May is her name. Uh, <laughs> and it's not, it's not a moniker, but I just feel like it's, kind of what the vibe of this family is. She says, what you do is your own business when they're asking, should we just leave this corpse in our car? But I'm just like, okay, so everything that you do, you keep to yourselves, it's your business. You don't bother any, you don't bother <laughs> anybody else. Right. <laughs> aside from killing them. Right. You just mind your business, but so other people should be minding theirs. I'm like, okay, it, set, it sets up the family. At least I know what the dynamic is. Um, I like, Jessica Beals. One thing I wrote down is when, even though Jed is not Leatherface, he's Tom Hewitt now. Tom Hewitt, yeah. Yeah. Um, Je there is a Jed, a Jedediah, the little spider baby. Yeah. And I just love the fact that when he introduces himself, uh, Jessica Beals just has this. It's a very un. She's a very unactory moment, but it works. She's just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. It's like, oh shit, oh, spider baby. Um, I, I also. Sheriff Hoyt is not uh, Jim C. Dow, and I'm, and he, you know, uh, the, the character I'm in. Compare him too? No, 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 but I, it's not about comparing him. It's about, I feel like he's the closest thing the franchise came to replacing that kind of role because he's, even though he's not the eldest in this family, the Hewitt family, um, I think he's kind of in control he's the one in the driver's seat yeah. kind of like just letting you go there you stay there i'm going to take care of this and everything like that and it that spills over into the next movie too which we'll talk about but i don't um i only have like two other things like um, well i know one thing that a lot of people complained about with the movie uh that i actually thought terrified me um and i thought it was an interesting new choice was kemper's face when leatherface is wearing it you know, kills whoever and <laughs> looks back up at Aaron, Jessica Beale, and she knows that Kemper is dead because yeah. he's wearing his face. And I just thought that was incredibly terrifying, inventive. And I know there were people who laughed. I've spoke, one of the first person I spoke to was my cousin who thought it was so stupid and just I mean, thought, and, and he's laughed out loud. And I've talked to other people who think, I was so stupid. And I'm like, no, nah, ter that's a terrifying way to find out. I don't Someone even, you love is dead. <laughs> I don't like this movie, and I will still say that, like on paper, that's that sucks for her character. Like it's a good beat. Yeah. Um, biggest complaint I have, or oh, not biggest? I I think I had my biggest complaint. But another big complaint I have watching it mm -hmm. when she goes to help, what's his name? The 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 guy who's hanging. Um, oh, blondie hanging guy. Blond blondie hanging guy. Andy Who cares. Andy, when she goes Andy. to help. <laughs> <laughs> and they, he gets a bone from the fucking house. Boom, 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 boom. I want oh, Leatherface no, to be like the Andy with the, puts on a chainsaw and grabs a bone yeah. from the fucking uh, meat locker. <laughs> that was great. Okay, now I feel happy. Um, so when, when Andy, Andy is hanging up on the thing, Okay, it's the stupidest, stupidest thing in the world because Aaron sees him hanging on the meat hook, you know, because we have to hit that note. Totally ineffective, by the way, this time, like him putting him up there. I'm like, everything that made that special, you, you have a big dramatic sting. You have his knowledge of like it happening, before, you know, like that's where he's going before it happens. And then when he does it, Oh, you know, it's just, it's so overblown. And I, mean, I actually I'm just find like, it okay. more effective when she's trying to pick him up from it. Like that affected me more than this did. Here's why I don't. Mm. 
she hears him. She can tell he's there because literally she hears like a ding, 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 you know, on the piano. He's over a piano, an upright piano behind him. That you could climb on. His toe, his toe's like dangling there playing the key or whatever. Why doesn't she just move the piano? <laughs> it is inches behind him. If she just moved it under him, he could lift his leg and grab, you know, that and try. And even why would she, why would he need her to do that either? Because it's literally inches. It's inches. He could like put his leg back and swing and lift himself up off the hook or try. But I'm he never even got there. One, but so, it's a price. No, so when it's she's price. when so when she's like lifting him up and everything, and then he says, kill me, or whatever he says, and then she gets the knife, I guess, is the knife. She's like, ah, I'm so sorry, I can't do it. I'm like, I'll just kill him. Well, I, I, I was having a discussion with a friend of, uh, uh, about this. If you thought, you know, you're, you're someone who you loved, anybody who you cared about, um, sibling, mm -hmm. lover, marriage, whatever, child, um, if they wanted to die, <laughs> would you off them and most people I there was a poll and most people answered no they wouldn't be able to do it and I'm like oh fuck I have a pact with my sister that if she turns into a zombie get rid of her and I told her same with me if, if I turn evil or something like that kill me um and if I ask you to kill me you better fucking kill me you better do it fast and it's like oh I will so we have a pact um and I feel like I do that for anybody who asked for it um if they're hanging from a fucking hook and there's no piano just behind her. But she's like going, ah, I can't, I can't do it, I'm sorry. And then she stabs him finally. And I feel like she misses, <laughs> like she doesn't stab him in uh, uh, um, a vital enough no. organ for it to die, for him to die like that. No, it sucks Just kind of gets him. him in the gut. Yeah, it really sucks for him. She should have like cut his throat or something. Yeah. But, um, so, right and then the he dies chest. and he's hanging there. And the fucking, piano right there and she's just weeping well, and she's him. weeping I, underneath him with all the blood falling on her i'm just like well yeah, move right. move out of the way <laughs> like, just stop getting blood on you and move i think it worked more on me before i realized that because i didn't realize that until semi-recently um i mean i'd say like the last decade i mean my, it's now almost 20 years old but my little nitpick is when he's up there his arms are out and i'm like oh are his arms tied and he can't he can't help so she's mm. trying all this shit doesn't work and then after all that he does this I'm like, your yeah. arms are free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> so I, again, I don't hate the movie. I mean, it sounds like I've complained a lot, but I've earned mm. those complaints because I was actually quite on board with it the first time I saw it. I was actually, because I was expecting the worst. I was like, this is not, this is probably not going to be any good. And then I watched it and I was like, well, I mean, it's, it's a story. I can follow it. <laughs> And also coming off of the last two sequels that I had seen and not had like overjoyed, you know, I mean, I hadn't responded to them the way I did Texas Chainsaw 2. So I was like, you know, this might be at that point. I was like, you know what? This might be my third favorite. And then as time continued, I mean, I remember I bought the double disc box and I, wa I loved it because it had that Ed Gein uh, or it was Ed Gein centric um, documentary on it. And they made allusions to Psycho and Sense of the Lambs and shit. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, nice and spooky. But um, I don't have it anymore. Oh. And I even bought it on Blue. Watched the documentary again. Watched the movie again. And went, I'm not going to watch this anymore. So I got rid of it and streamed it off Tubi for this. Nice. And <laughs> so, what's yeah. funny is I, I used to hate it. I don't mm -hmm. hate it anymore. But even back when I hate it, I bought it. Mm. the two disc mm. fancy packaged edition yeah um because i remember when the dvd came out i read multiple dvd reviews that said there's this good documentary on ed gein it's like only 20 30 minutes so it's pretty good yeah i always wanted to see that documentary and uh mm. i was at ross and they had it for three bucks oh shit i went sold yeah Watched the ed gein documentary I, went, All right. I still have it, it and i <laughs> For the first time ever, I put the movie disc in <laughs> and watched the movie for a second time for this viewing. Um, <laughs> Was there anything else that stood out to you this particular viewing? Yeah, actually, plenty. Um, it actually, this is gonna, uh, I'm gonna sound really catty and shitty for the next few minutes. Um, okay. It hasn't aged well because mm. we we have we have 
uh, cinematically and culturally kind of moved away from this type of movie. We've moved away from the the fog, the hills have eyes, Texas Chainsaw, Platinum Dunes, remakes of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we've kind of entered into a, a very fun Bloomhousey era, um, a very James Wan Insidious era, a very Paranormal Activity era, and um, a very A24 hereditary uh, It Follows sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So watching this movie, and when you're having needlessly grimy shots, because it's a reboot, so it needs to be needlessly grimy and orange and brown. And then someone walks by and it's just their silhouette and the music goes, yeah. And it happens like two or three times. It happens at least two times in this movie. It's awful. And, and I'm like, oh, it's been a while since I've watched one of these. This is yeah. so like 2000s. Yeah, and I've I've moved we've moved away from making movies that do this. Yeah, I, I'm not. I don't need. Yeah, I don't miss this. Needless <laughs> jump scares the second a person walks. Yeah, and, <laughs> and we all bitched about it back in the day. All the needless jump scares that was yeah. that was a common complaint then. But it's been a long time since I've got to complain about it <laughs> because we, we moved on. <laughs> um. The, the thing that I, one of the things I can't stand about this movie is uh, how uh, production designed it is. Where we we find the little spider babies thing, and he's got skulls and dolls, and it doesn't at all feel like this is his setup. It feels produced to be yeah. spooky skulls and dolls. And we get in the house, and there are mannequins because weird they got mannequins where and then and then you know we get into his lair and there's fingers and and teeth and and it and it's all like fingers made into things and and not once for a second do i look at it like leatherface or anyone's family made these Mm -hmm. whereas in the first movie i look at that shit and i see that that nubbins and text and leatherface made this yeah they fashion absolutely I look Absolutely. at the, I look at this and I feel like a set decorator placed these things here. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it is not a set, it is a horror maze walkthrough with doll heads and fingers. Mhm. And um, with uh, 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 placed lights like shaft of light from there for no good reason. Yeah, I mean, shaft of light from That didn't yeah. bother me. Um so much as you know just like the layer everything's so needlessly wet um <laughs> oh my god yeah there's a fucking puddle in the basement for reasons yeah um <laughs> but i guess effective because it's she gets covered in blood right and goes and the guy's in the tub and comes and goes blah, blah, blah. right and then the very next scene and for the whole rest of the movie her face is clean yeah oh so clean i'm like <laughs> I guess when he came out of the tub, like that water just was like whoosh and yeah. like Nugzima yeah. and it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the, the, it, it, it's funny because I, I forgot how like not gory it is. I was being really surprised mm. after, and it's a critique that I have that this movie has no gore. Yeah. Um, aside from Lauren German blowing her brains out. Right. It's like the movie's like, no, no, we're going to do one super gnarly gore thing and then nothing else. But we're mm. really going to do the, it's going to go through the head. It's going to be fucking gross. Um, and the body's going to sit in the van for the next 10, yeah. 20, but the rest 30 of the movie, minutes. Like every kill is, is pretty, there's a lot of cutaways. And, and mm-hmm. uh, I remember the, the, the last straw for me was when, uh, well, let me see if I can pull up his name. Uh, Morgan. Morgan gets hung up when they're towards like the final chase yeah and then leatherface takes a chainsaw and goes right up his 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 his, his crotch mm. and we just kind of cut away and we cut to leatherface then we cut to a wide shot from the waist up of him just going ah and i'm like cut like we're, we're just gonna cut completely around the, oh my god now it's a weird complaint to have based on a franchise i understand that i'm being a hypocrite where the first movie doesn't show mm. you gore yeah, but like I've said before, you need to give me other things. And when you don't yeah. give me a compelling story, when you don't give me atmosphere, when you don't give me characters, then you better give me gore. And if you don't give me that, then like what 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 am I what am I doing here? Mm. 
And uh, I, I, I was surprised like how gutless the movie was when it came to its kills. And yeah. especially for like Texas Chainsaw, and, ew, it's so grimy, but like it's a pretty gutless movie. Um, yeah. Which to me makes it kind of a worthless experience because I don't really care about any of these characters. Um, I, I do like Lauren German and stuff. I love Erica Learson and stuff. I actually <laughs> think Jessica Biel is, is, is doing good work here. Um, I'm me too, butcher, me too. I'm going to butcher his name wrong, but Andrew Briansky? Oh, Bri oh, Brinarski, Brinarski, I think. Dad, go, save yourself. Dad, go, like, <laughs> I, I, do not, Shrek. <laughs> I do not like his leather face. But if I, there don't was, think, if I don't think about his leather face, I just like him getting work. But um, no, I, I agree. Uh, there was one moment that I was like, oh, there's leather face, kind of. And it was when uh, Hoyt was getting his pants ironed and Jessica Beale's uh, laying on the floor or on the couch on the floor, uh, coming to and screaming and whatever. And she's not even tied to anything. I'm like, what are you doing? Get up, beat the family. Anyway, <laughs> but, um, but he's just, and they're talking, she's talking about, they treated my boy, you know, uh, Luda May is going on about her boy and people, you're one of them people who was bad to my boy or whatever. And he's just sitting outside the room, hiding in a huddle and mm -hmm. just kind of like, not trying not to listen and then looking like a kid and i was just kind of like oh that's all right the but that is the only has, time the, the rest, rest of the time like a he's... lumbering thing exactly and too threatening like way threatening and way. i'm like that's not leatherface which makes the him threat nothing. is not the threat is not in <sighs> i'm angry it's that's that's not leatherface but that i that's why it's not bubba or jed or <laughs> right. or junior um, it's and, and it's also Tom <laughs> and the whole family, like to me, just just like how it's set decoration for like dolls and teeth, it just feels like, well, here's some southern people that like when they're friendly, you're actually really scary and sinister, and like we got we got a creepy lady who lives in the trailer with her skinny little daughter, and then we've got old man, and like it's all just. <laughs> It's not even tropey. It's just like this one-dimensional cardboard idea of. It's just like, who are you? Well, we haven't known who most of the family members who aren't Leatherface are up until this point. But yeah, much like the sets, <laughs> these feel like the characters that a bunch of college kids came up with for their haunted maze. We're like, well, what's the mm. scary? Well, we have to have this old man in a wheelchair, and we have to have this late. Like it's it's all just fucking nonsense. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm the crotchety amputee. <laughs> it's, yeah. And at no point did I ever wonder, how did Sheriff lose his teeth? How did, how did old Monty get in the wheelchair? We'll get there. Wait. We'll yeah. get there. <laughs> um, and then I actually, <laughs> where did go those on. teeth go? Um, <laughs> I remember the first time I watched this, this was a problem. And then for some reason this time, I, I guess I, I thought maybe it was, me, but I don't I hate the, like, you already have the scroll in the text, like, so why do I need to do this film footage opening? And then it's bookended, and you see, like, Leatherface show up and kill the, the cops that's filming the video. And I'm, I remember in 2004 going, well, then, well, then, where'd they, like, if they, where'd they get the footage if, like, he killed them? Like, what? Like, so, who, who, who got the footage? And then only this time did I realize I was being really snobby. Like, there's got to be more cops around. They sent one or two in the basement, but there's still others around who probably went yeah. and found the footage. But it, it's such a stupid thing to tack on. Like, and especially in 2003 to still kind of do the narration as if this is real. It's fucking yeah. stupid to me. Um, <laughs> it's really I just, like that they brought John LaRiquette back. That's a very nice <laughs> touch. That, that is nice. Um, but yeah, I, the, the, my, my, my last real bit is that... Um, the, the last act of this movie is tedious. It, like, um, there, <laughs> there is only about like 60 pages worth of stuff. And then it just becomes, uh, I'm running, oh no, and then I'm escaping the house. And then I run yep. to the farm. And then, yep. I hide, then I go into the meat facility. And then yep. I hide in the locker. And then I go to this other house. And it's just like, there, well, there's no movie. It's just, yeah. and it, what's cool is every once in a while, like, uh, like gone, the original Gone in 60 Seconds is one long car chase, mm -hmm. but it's good, it's well done. So you can be like, oh my God, it's one long car chase. And yeah. if this had any sense of horror and dread, it'd be like, 
oh my god did you ever see that movie where like the last 30 minutes is just one long chase exactly it's right so right intense. right it's not intense it's just like and then just gabriel goes here and then she runs over there and then she goes over <laughs> there like you said it's about the environments it's like they're planting yeah. and she just seeds for she just like walk through breathes, experiences for people yeah she totally. breathes heavy and acts kind of scared um <laughs> she, she gets into the, the 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 meat plant and then she like turns around and like sees the jump scare is a hook is hanging yes i know <laughs> and when um, does he lose his arm when when, when does, does he lose his arm after she yeah. comes out of the locker, she's right? in the locker, yeah. And yeah. Okay. he's holding a chainsaw. Yeah. And she manages to like keep whacking and whacking and he just takes it. Uh, I don't yeah. have an idea. <laughs> I will say, so I do like the cast. Erica Learson is bomb and everything. Um, right. I see Lauren German show up and stuff. Uh, I think this was pre-hostile too. Um, the one little thing that I liked um, was that you know, the, in Texas Chainsaw One, they established that you know, Nubbin says like his uncle worked at you know both Franklin and and the the Hugh, uh, the Sawyers have a history with the meat plant, mm -hmm. and even in four and five, they, they mentioned the uh, the gas station guy uh, with the, with the name who you don't want to learn, um, Alfredo. Alfredo yeah. used to work at, at the meat plant. Four movies. And the the remake is the first time where like they take the horror into a, a meat plant. It, that that kind of probably should have happened a few movies earlier. And so like, yeah. kudos to you for for going there. Sure. And the cast is is trying their best, and and it, I didn't I didn't hate it. I I, I, hate it. I I mean I don't like Arlie Ermy's character, but I think he gives a really really good performance. He scares the shit out of me, and it's probably the most. No torture porny adjacent thing that is non-gore but it's the whole uh gun with morgan in the van sequence that makes me uncomfortable but i oh. I'm, but i i'm also like this isn't texas chainsaw massacre this is the 2000s <laughs> yeah that's what this is this is the kind morgan of movie plays that it could really be really well though uh yeah morgan's was, great uh, yeah that was uh jonathan tucker and uh great great stuff i i between uh between the ruins and hannibal i, I like that i like i want to say i like that kid but he's i think he's like my age or old <laughs> yeah right but yeah no i like him too um yeah that's i guess that's that's all uh, that and the leatherface mask i fucking hate it i hate it i hate it it's not even it, it shouldn't even be called a leatherface mask it's a rubber mask yeah um nothing it looks like a beehive on his face <laughs> <laughs> that's a good yeah growing hair nothing yeah that's what the it first looks like. three masks of the first movie but i like texas chainsaw 2's mask for what it is and for the yeah. story, for what leatherface is in that movie mm -hmm. um i actually like three for the simplistic hulking monster that he is for three sure. um but yeah man do i despise the the overly sculpted i don't like his hair i just mm -mm. Yeah. Um, oh, and the 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 um, leprosy. Yeah, I don't ever need to see him with his mask off, ever. No, and and even if I do, like, don't make him a leper to give him a reason to need a mask. Like we that, I don't, um, I don't I stop. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, stop. So, yeah, I never need the the reason was we already got the reason. Like we're fine. Um, yeah. So there, um, let's come back for a part yeah. three video and we will continue with uh, Texas Chainsaw The Beginning, which um, I'll leave you with this. I, 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 I don't hate it as much as you do. And I, <laughs> so um, Come back for more because I think Eddie and I are going to disagree a little bit on the next one. I'm going to die. <laughs> I'm going to die. Okay. See you later, folks. Bye.